Hey, this debate's about to start, but in case you didn't know, it's also available on our Modern Day Debate podcast right now in case you want to listen to it on the go. So here is that debate right now. Hey everybody, tonight we're debating Flat Earth versus Globe Earth and we are starting right now. With T-Jump's opening statement on behalf of the globe, Tom, thanks for being with us. The floor is all yours. Well, thanks, James. Thanks, uh, Nathan, for being here. Appreciate the opportunity as always. So we know for a fact the world is a globe because we've been to space and we can see it. But that, of course, doesn't convince the flat earthers because they want something that they themselves can confirm, which we can also provide because there's this thing called radar. Radar is this magical technology that we've invented that can tell distances and speeds and locations and sizes of things that are far away. And the way it does that is it bounces radio waves, it emits them from an emitter, and it hits something and then it bounces back. And we just literally count the time it takes to go from the object that bounces off of to the receiver and back. And we know how far away it is and what shape it is based off of how the radio waves bounce off of the thing. And guess what? We can do this for things in space, too. Like, you yourself can go buy a ham radio, and if you spend enough money, you can buy one that can bounce radio signals off of the moon. You can communicate with people on the other side of the planet by bouncing radio signals off of the moon. We know exactly how far the way the moon is, 280-something thousand, I think was the number, miles, exactly as said by... Ooh, we got an echo there. Uh, Exactly as said by NASA which means it's in space. Like there's, there's no dome there. We know for a fact there's no dome there because nothing, the radio waves don't bounce off it. It does bounce off the moon, doesn't bounce off anything behind the moon, doesn't bounce off anything in any direction that is not the moon. Um, so we know it's 280,000 miles away or whatever the number is. So we can measure the size of the moon, the shape of the moon, the distance of the moon. We know it's in space. We know that the radio waves don't, oh, I'm still hearing an echo. Are you hearing it too, James? Yes, I am. Nathan, you don't have a, the uh, watch page on, do you? Thank you. He's muted. No, I'm not watching, but I'll go on mute for you. Yeah, it might be just my volume coming through his mic and or his his speakers and being heard by his mic because of waves. Gotcha. Know. So, uh, yeah, so so we can know that the moon is in space. We know it's up there. We know the distances. All the, all the things NASA says are correct. We can bounce radio waves off of it. Not a problem. So we know... All of these facts that we and as individuals can confirm that what NASA says is correct. Uh, the speed of light, for example. We can also measure the speed of light because that's literally what radio waves are, is they're using the radio waves, which move at the speed of light, to measure things. And we can prove this. It's very simple. We did this in the 1800s, the 1700s, the 1900s, and pretty much every other hundreds because it's really easy to do. And so we can measure lots of different things using these radio waves that you yourself can go build in your backyard to communicate with people on the other side of the planet. And you can know where they're located because they can tell you, or you could build one for your friend's house and your house and then calculate the distance and the shape of the planets by communicating with them in the direction you have to point the waves and the way they reflect and how they communicate with other people. You can triangulate the, the directions. So we know the world is, is a globe and you yourself can prove this. Any human being can prove this, which is why flurfs are so dumb because anyone can prove this. Anyone, just anyone can just build their own mechanism of a radio, a ham radio. If you build a powerful enough one, you can bounce radio signals off the moon. You can know where it is. You know how far away it is. And if you rent the, the really, really big ones, you can bounce radio signals off the sun too. So we know how far away that is and how big that is. So this stuff is really easy to do. It's really easy to confirm. Anybody can go build these things and demonstrate that, yes, in fact, the world is round. The moon is 280, whatever, how many thousands of miles away. It is a big ball in space and you can bounce radio waves off it and get back to earth to talk to people on the other side of the planet. All of this stuff is easy. That is the most simplest way to demonstrate the world is in fact round and it is irrefutable and flurfs have no idea what they're talking about. Now I'll conclude there. Thank you very much, Tom, for that opening statement. We are going to kick it over to Nathan for his opening as well. We want to let you know, though, folks, if it's your first time here at Modern Day Debate, we are a neutral platform hosting debates on science, religion, and politics. And so if you haven't yet Hit that subscribe button as we have many more juicy upcoming debates. For example, Dr. Michael Brown, Christian apologist, will be taking on Apostate Prophet next month on June 9th. You don't want to miss it, so do hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. Nathan, thanks for being here. The floor is all yours. You're on mute. 
James, I want to thank you for having me on again. I really appreciate it. T-Jump, thanks for joining us. Uh, shout out Destiny Clothing for the shirt and the tinfoil hat factory for the hat. I uh, really appreciate that, guys. So starting it off with, an honest man, when proven to be wrong, must either admit that he is wrong or he no longer remains to be an honest man. The truth is incontrovertible. Churchill was famous for saying this. Malice will try and attack it, calling me flurfs. We're too dumb to figure it out. And ignorance will try and deride it. But in the end, there it is. So I never wanted to be a flat earther ladies and gentlemen, I laughed at the idea of the earth being flat when it was introduced to me. And uh, then a mentor of mine, who someone who's really intelligent, was looking into it for seven months. And it, I almost dropped the phone when he told me that because he was so intelligent. I thought, there's no way this guy could be looking into flat earth for seven months. And here I am five years later, I ran a research group with 150,000 people where we asked Globers to post firsthand evidence that the earth is a spinning ball in space. T-Jump had no firsthand evidence. He said, we could build, you could build, we, you haven't done it. And he, and he acts like it's so easy to just go build things in your backyard and bounce radar waves off the moon. Well, if it's so easy, bro, how come you haven't done it to confirm your model yet? So on top of that, uh, massive amounts of ostracism, being a flat earther, as you saw here in T-Jump's opening, but also I don't want all the world governments lying to me about the shape of the earth. I mean, that's kind of weird, right? That's spooky. But uh, facts are facts. Now let's look at the facts. We'll start with fluid statics. Fluid statics are large bodies of water at rest, the study of them. Fluid dynamics is bodies of water in motion. So when you look at a body of water at rest, the surface of the body of water is flat and horizontal to the container, requires a container. A spinning ball is not a container. Every time you put water on a ball and spin it, the water flies off. That's observable. That's reality, okay? That's repeatable. That's testable. That's science. So also you have to hold a compass flat for it to work. The Suez Canal has zero locks, zero um, curvature, and it's over 100 miles. You've got the Statue of Liberty being observed from over 60 miles. Ladies and gentlemen, we see way too far. The horizon is flat. Even PhD astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson will tell you there is no curve at 128,000 feet. Now, for years, I had to hear Globers say, have you ever been on an airplane? And I'm not kidding. I was at Disney World one time and a guy said, you can see the curve from your hotel. Just go up to about the eighth floor. Now, if the mainstream scientists, PhD astrophysicists that run observatories and have 6 million followers on Twitter say you can't see curve from 128,000 feet and it's a fisheye lens curving the picture and all you see in the picture is New Mexico, well, not only does that Red Bull jump prove the Earth's flat and not curving, but the Earth didn't rotate under Felix Baumgartner when he ascended for three hours. This is another point I have. The Earth's not rotating. I'll get to that in a second because we have more proof the Earth is flat. Specular reflections. The incident angle of the light matches the reflection angle of the light. If you go to a house of mirrors at a circus, anytime there is distortion or curvature in the surface of a mirror, there will be some sort of distortion in the image. Okay. Now, that's actually how they make glass. They actually melt the molten metal on top of, or the molten glass on top of molten metal because all liquids at rest are flat. That's also another way they get the bubbles to rise out out of the mirrors and the glass. But I'm getting off track. Gyroscopes keep their rigidity in space. Ladies and gentlemen, we would not use gyroscopes in an airplane to fly level if a gyroscope was curving around a ball. Airplanes admit in their FAA documents that the Earth's flat, non-rotating, and they do not account for gravity vector. Now, I don't know if you want to talk to a pilot who believes Ursa Ball and never tested it, great. But the people who train the pilots, the Federal Aviation Administration says the Earth is flat, non-rotating, and they negate a gravity vector. On top of that, you've got microwave repeaters. And last but not least, we've got the black, sun, black swan. If the Ursa Ball, curving in all directions, the horizon would be approximately 1.225 times the square root of the observer's height and feet. Problem is, We've done observations at one foot where the horizon is over 10 miles out. Now, that would necessitate that the Earth's radius 
is about the size of the orbital path of the moon, 250,000 miles, ladies and gentlemen. So the globe Earth has been falsified already. I'm, I'm honestly here as a favor to James doing this debate. So on top of that, Earth doesn't move, ladies and gentlemen, period, doesn't move. Mainstream science asserts the Earth has a Coriolis and objects in the air experience Earth rotating under them. Now, I don't know if you've ever seen a hummingbird or a helicopter, a hot air balloon, a drone, a ball you throw in the air, or maybe a golf ball you hit off the tee. The Earth does not rotate under anything. So the Earth does not rotate. They lie. Plain and simple. Again, the FAA asserts the Earth is non-rotating. That's why we don't have drastically different journey times when traveling west to east as opposed to traveling uh, east to west. I thought about this when I was a kid. I would go visit my dad in Ohio, and it would be four hours to get there and four hours to get back. And I thought, hmm, that's weird. They told me the Earth was spinning. Turns out they lie. On top of that, ladies and gentlemen, can't have gas pressure without a container. High pressure systems move towards low pressure systems. It's called the second law of thermodynamics. If it didn't happen all the time, it wouldn't be a law. Now, if you put your hand on a hot stove, it will burn you 100 out of 100 times. If you pop a car tire and the tire has air in it, the air is going to escape into the space around the tire 100 out of 100 times. Okay, it's the second law of thermodynamics. So you cannot have gas pressure, which we are all breathing at the moment, 14.7 PSI at the surface, without the necessary antecedent of a container of some sort. Now, very convenient for me, not so much for T-Jump, the sky is a map and a clock. We've got 88 constellations. Polaris never moves. We can do astroarchaeology, which I've actually filmed myself. I went to the Georgia Guidestones about three months ago, Go check out Be The Change before that channel disappears. It's got two strikes, and they deleted my last channel, Nathan Thompson, and they deleted the official Flat Earth and Globe discussion. So this topic's being heavily censored. Hats off to James for still continuing with the topic. Really appreciate it. So um, also, another proof the sky's a map and a clock, and we don't orbit around the sun, ladies and gentlemen, at 66,600 miles an hour, is that you can lay on your back January 1st, observe the stars. Six months later, lay on your back in the same place at night and observe the stars. Now, let's pretend for a second that my head is the sun, right? So nighttime would be over there towards the kitchen, okay? Now, six months later, the globe would be on this side of the sun and nighttime would be over there towards the neighbor's house. If that was happening, you would not observe the same stars every six months I talked about it in my speech in Dallas. If anyone needs it, email me, flatearthflyers at gmail.com. Uh, I love you guys. On top of that, um, T-Jump said, we know, we've been to space. Then he talks about radar systems he's never built. Then he says, we can do this with things in space. Then he assumes the moon is in space, which I find hilarious because he kept repeating over and over, we can trust everything NASA says. Well, oops, T-Jump, I don't know if you knew this, but NASA claims that the moon isn't in space, it's in Earth's atmosphere. They just said that, not joking. So you can Google it right now on your little oyster clam couch and check it out because everything you said in your opener just got destroyed by your priest, NASA, who asserts the moon is not in space. So you're not bouncing anything off the moon and confirming one space is real or any of that. It's a total joke, bro. Uh, on top of that, um, he kept saying you yourself can build, but never did. And then he called flurfs dumb. And then he said anyone can build one. Again, just kept repeating yourself. So that was pretty boring. Uh, that's going to close my opener. Looking forward to the question and answer. Or back yeah. and forth. You got it. Thank you very much. And with that, we're going to jump into the open conversation, folks. Want to let you know, though, our guests are linked in the description. We do appreciate our guests. And as always, we want to ask you, 99.9% .9 of you do a fantastic job. And we appreciate that and want to say thank you for attacking the arguments instead of the person. So with that, gentlemen, the floor is all yours.
Uh, well, actually, I have built one of these, so I, I have done it personally, which is debunks all of Nathan. What Nathan said, oh. yeah, yeah. I, I go to a college uh, where we do, we do this kind of stuff oh, all the time. You go to a college, oh, yes. okay. So the college did it. You didn't do it in your backyard. No. Who, who do you think builds them? It's they, they give us money, and we then use the money to buy parts, and then we put the parts together like Lego pieces. <laughs> we build them. Oh my God, we do it. We do it, Nathan, and you can too. This is really easy. It's called a ham radio. Do you know what a ham radio is, Nathan? <laughs> A little bit of feedback. You know just, I'll give you a chance to respond, years. Nathan. But there's about. a little bit of feedback I'm, I'm hearing. So, yeah, a little bit. Go ahead, Nathan, if you want to respond. Um, you uh, said we can trust. Yeah, you said we can trust everything NASA says. T jump. No, I didn't say that. I said we can confirm many of the things NASA says ourselves. That's what I said. No, in your opener, you said everything NASA tells us is true. No, I didn't say that. I said right? we can confirm. No, no, I said we could confirm many of okay, the so things. Okay, so what does NASA, NASA lie about? I what does NASA can, lie to us about? Nathan, listen, listen to the words. So, so I said, we can confirm many of the things NASA says. We can't confirm everything because we don't have a Hubble telescope. So we can prove many of the things they're saying is true. It doesn't mean the other things are false, Nathan. False. T-Jump, did you know NASA claims the moon is in Earth's atmosphere? Yes, on the very edge, which is still technically a part of space. No, on the edge? Show me the edge. In, in, in the edge. So, so yes, the Where's atmosphere the contains different layers. You know, like if you pour smoke, like just heavy water smoke out, it falls. And the heavier gases, they sit in the bottom and then the lighter gases sit on the top. Like just here on Earth, we can do this test with gases. You have any kind of gas. And if the gas is heavier or denser it goes to the bottom of the gases and the lighter gases go on the top of the gases that's the atmosphere just a bunch of gas sitting on top of each other you said you jump that we could do this with things in space and then talked what? about space uh, you can you stop interrupting me please uh well i'm curious what did i say we could do in space? one thing is we do have feedback so i i think nathan if you're willing to kind of sit back in your seat the way you presented your opening statement that might help because there's for some reason I, I can't tell where it's coming from but it might be your how close you are to the mic i'm not sure I, I, james i think it's the fact that his speakers on his laptop are projecting the sound and his microphone on his laptop is picking up the sound i don't think it has to do with his location That's i've done every possible. debate this way every single debate on the channel i've done this exact same way next We'll go into whatever issue you wanted to address, Nathan. But or I should say, Nathan, continue on, I and and he interrupts me. So, go ahead, Nathan. Yeah. What I wanted to say was, we can do this with things in space, is what T Jump said. And then he said, we bounce the radar off the moon. Now, T Jump, did you know NASA says the moon is not in space? No, they it's don't. It's in Earth's atmosphere. No, they don't. It's, the atmosphere yes, is also they in do. space. So, the atmosphere is space? In space, yes. We, Earth, the whole thing is in space. The fact that it's a, in a part of the atmosphere doesn't make it not space, too. Space isn't completely okay. devoid of everything. There are particles in space. We'll move on, ladies and, we'll move on. Ladies and gentlemen. Go ahead and Google what NASA says because they just debunked everything T Jump said. Where we well, actually, it's, it's, my it's my turn. It's my turn. Are you going to interrupt again? Hold again? Yes. Let's, it's my, it's let's, my turn. Let, my turn. let's let Nathan finish his point or oh, sentence. No, he did. He asked a question. I answered the Hold question. On. So we're, we're, no, we're going to give going to give Nathan a chance to finish his sentence. I think he was mid sentence, and then I promise we'll come right back to you, Tom. Nathan, what were you going to say? Yeah. So NASA asserts the moon isn't in space. T Jump said we can bounce radar off things in space, and then says he bounces it off the moon, which NASA says isn't even in space. Gotcha. All right. Thank you. We'll kick it over to Tom and least a couple of minutes uh yes so the the moon is in space yes that is it is also in the atmosphere those are not contradictory things this is not hard nathan just doesn't understand um astrophysics this is not a, not a problem so the moon's also in the solar system too wow Oof. Ugh. contradiction mm. uh no so again my question was how does radar work nathan C can we bounce radar off things is radar a pretty accurate tool we can use here on earth so the moon is in space, but it's also in Earth's atmosphere. Is that what you're saying, T-Jump? Yeah, it's also in the solar system. Can you answer my question, Nathan? How does radar no, no, work? Wait, so you understand that space is a vacuum and the atmosphere is pressurized. So how are you saying that the atmosphere is space and space is the atmosphere and the moon is in space and the moon is in Earth's atmosphere? 
Uh, that doesn't make any the sense. Space no. has to do with a certain density of the atmosphere. If there's a low enough density, then you're in space. And the low enough density of the atmosphere at that rate is space. So space isn't you know, space a total is vacuum. Yeah. Space is not a 100% vacuum. That's just not, not the case, Nathan. It's enough of a vacuum. And there is enough of a vacuum in that area to call it space. So yes, it is still space. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you heard it here first. The moon is in space, but it's also in Earth's atmosphere. T-Jump, is the horizon the geometric curve of the Earth? I don't care. I want you to answer my question. You haven't answered. <laughs> you don't care. You want me to answer your question. What's your question? Yeah. So can is radar an accurate thing? Does it bounce off things? Is it very I don't know. Accurate? I've never Does used it... radar. Okay. So is um, the Earth curve geometric okay. horizon or no? No idea. You don't know if the Earth curve is a geometric horizon. T jump. Have you ever heard that boats go over the curve of the Earth? Okay. So, um, what does that have to do with my argument in my opening? Okay. Well, we're debating whether the Earth is a globe or it's flat. T jump. And I. Well, if the Earth was a globe, then boats would go over the geometric curve, which would be at one point two two five times the square root of the observer's height in feet. Is the horizon the geometric curve of the Earth key jump? Remember, or Nathan. Not? Remember, Nathan, I had the positive position here. That's why you had me go first. You specifically said Tom is holding the positive that the world is a globe, which means you have to address my arguments, not the other way around, Nathan. So address my arguments. Does radar work? Do planes use radar? Can you build a radar? Is a ham radio a real thing that anyone can build in their backyard for less than a thousand dollars? Is that a thing? Is that a thing, Nathan? Do, do those exist? Yes, radar is real, T-Jump. I don't specialize in radar, so do, is it okay if we move on to another topic? No. Is that all you want to talk about with radar? If you have no data for it, no evidence, any photographic yeah, evidence, yeah. you literally just said, you can test it, it confirms Earth's a globe. I'm trying to get to the nitty gritty. Is the horizon that we see where the sky meets the Earth, the curve of the Earth, T-Jump, and you said, I argument. don't care? I don't care if it was in your argument. I'm asking you if the horizon is the curve of the Earth. This is... Back and forth, T-Jump? You know how that works, right? Yeah, so, so I presented an argument. Okay, that great. The, it's the horizon, wait, the geometric wait, curve of the wait, Earth. Wait, so, so I presented an argument that proves the world is ground. I didn't say anything about the horizon. I don't care about the horizon because I can prove it in this way. I don't need to prove it in every way. So in this way, with radio, we can prove the world is globe, 100%. Now, if you don't understand radio, that's fine. You can't contest the argument. Now, if you want a video, I can provide you a video. Uh, bouncing radio, sing, bouncing radio off the moon guide video okay here we go we got videos bouncing radio off the moon hack a day here we go ham radio just instructions on how to do it Hold here on. we go there's videos of king kong climbing the statue of liberty with a girl in his hand bro so you got a video that makes it real you asked for a video i gave you a video i'll give you a video you you're not showing me you doing anything t-jump do you ever get off your clam couch no i live on the clam couch no, you, you said head. you did it Where's the evidence of you doing it, T-Jump? If this is what we're going to talk about and you don't want to talk about the horizon because you're scared of the horizon. So, so, so Nathan, I presented an argument or evidence that the world proves the world is round. So if you can't refute that evidence, then I have won the debate. I've proved the world is round. T-Jump. So saying saying I don't have video of me doing it personally, like I, I can get video of me doing it personally. Is that what you would require? If I have video of me doing it personally, does that mean I win? Because I, I can get it. You haven't like, shown anything, period. But... Please don't interrupt me, okay? TJ, I'm asking you, I'm telling you, I'm not radar specialist. Never use radar. Apparently you're a radar specialist. It proves there's a globe. Great, I'm a dumb flirt. Let's move on to maybe the horizon. When we look at the horizon, TJ, is that the curve of the earth? Yes or no? Wait a minute. So, so remember, I have the positive position here. So, so I present evidence, and you have to counter oh. that evidence. So, if you're just admitting that I'm right, we're just gonna go round and round, moderator. Are we just gonna go round and round? Wait, 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 so, so Nathan, as you said in the beginning, you're the one who said T jumps going first because he's holding the positive position. So, so how debate works is the positive position presents evidence and you have to address that evidence. If you say I'm ignorant of the topic and have no idea, that means you can't counter the evidence and my evidence wins. This holds. So 
uh, you would have to present some reason to think that my evidence is false. Saying I haven't presented it, I can present it to you. There are plenty of YouTube videos and guides that literally explain this. And if you want, I can make a recording of myself doing this at the university too. That's easy to produce. Um, so if that's what you need, I can I can easily provide that. But you haven't actually addressed my evidence. Are you, are you saying that it's false because you haven't seen me do it? Are you, are you saying I'm lying or or that all of these YouTube videos, every single one of them is lying and every one of these guys that you can build yourself are lying? Is that your argument, Nathan? Because if it's not and these are true, then your worldview is proven false. So, so why do you think this evidence doesn't prove your worldview false? We'll give you a couple of minutes to respond, Nathan. Yeah, can we see the evidence, TJ? Yes. This is going to prove the Earth's a globe? Yes. That's what the debate's about, right? Is the Earth yes. flat or is the Earth a globe? Great. Excellent. Yes. So, so here it is. If James, could you pull it up and show okay. it on screen? Bouncing radio signals off the moon. Uh, just it's the first YouTube image you should come up with. You uh, want a video. How does that prove the Earth's a globe? Uh, so, so radar works by you bounce the radio signals off things and it gives you the shape, size, speed, location of the things. And you can bounce radio signals off of a mirror like the moon and then have it come back and hit the earth. And it'll tell you the size and the shape and the distance of the earth too. So the, you do you do know what radio is in general, right? Yeah, but you're bouncing them off the moon and then you tell me it tells you the shape of the earth? Yes. So, so if you bounce radio signals off one thing and it hits another thing, it can then bounces off that other thing too. And so it can tell you the size of that thing too. Okay, so you're bouncing them off the moon, then bouncing them off the earth, and then and then catching the radar. And and that's what you're doing? Y yes, so there's these things called multiple radar stations <laughs> all over the world, and you can send signals between them. Like you can you bounce it off the moon, and then it goes back and talks to them, and then they can send a signal, and it bounces off the moon and comes back to you. And you can send a signal to the moon, and it bounces back to yourself. So yes, you can literally measure the shape of the Earth by bouncing radio signals off the moon into yourself. That is that is a thing. Yes, it's, it's like radar. It's like two ships bouncing radar off of an island. You can, you, yes, it's called triangulation. All right, let's see the evidence. Okay, James, did you did you find the video bouncing radio signals off the moon? So it is a challenge James, where it's find, James has hold to on, find your quiet. Evidence. I'm what I'm doing is. It is hard for me to pull this up without the stream buffering. If you are able to pull it up on your side, Tom, and share your screen, that makes it easier for me. Okay. James, can you find my evidence for me, please? It's your whole argument, bro. Yeah, that's my whole argument. James, James, do a Google search because that's literally the evidence. Uh, sure. Um, let's see. Oh, wait. Want to remind you folks in the meantime, our guests are linked in the description, and we are excited for many juicy upcoming debates. And that screen share is ready right now. So here's a guide of guys teaching you how to bounce radio signals off the moon with exactly the metrics and how to do it, the equipment to build it. Here is their device. They build it in front of you and they bounce it off things and talk to people with this thing and they can measure the distance to the moon and back very simply. This is super easy. Um, anybody can do this. This is not like super expensive equipment. This is stuff you can do with car batteries and it's a computer uh, parts and super easy. So they bounce the signals off the moon somewhere around the end. So they, this is, they do it and they get the numbers back on their computer thingy right there showing that they did, in fact, bounce the radio signals off the moon with the time it takes, how far the moon away is, 250,000 miles. They got the numbers right. Woohoo! They did it. They proved it, that that's, the moon is 250,000 miles away. It is the correct size and shape. And they communicated with people on the other side of the planet and got the numbers right, so they know the planet is round two. This is really, really simple stuff. Anybody can do this. You can, you can build this in your backyard. It costs less than 10 grand. Go for it. There you go. You got your proof, Nathan. Somebody literally did this. Okay, I don't know if anyone was actually impressed by that. T-Jump obviously hasn't tested the Earth himself or done any of this. He just keeps saying, you can do it. Where was the evidence Ursa Globe in that video, bro? 
was the numbers. So, so how radio signals work. Is, wait, 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 Nathan, so, so, slow down. So how a radio signal works is it, is it bounces a signal, it sends a signal out, it hits an object and it comes back. And then a computer gives you a number. And the number tells you how far away the object is, what the speed of the object is, uh, where the signal is coming from, those kinds of things. So it, the evidence is the numbers, Nathan. That's how science works. It's not like they're going to show you a picture of everything. What they do is they show you the numbers, the math, because that's what science is. It's math. Uh, and the math is the evidence. So yes, this is literally bouncing radio signals off of the moon. So we know exactly how far away it is. We know exactly the size and shape of it. We know exactly where the signals are going. And we can transmit and receive signals and triangulate the shape of the earth doing this. This is very simple. Like what, what, which part of this isn't making sense to you? I'm not getting it. TJ, what were the numbers? What were the, the exact numbers? Like I, I could go back and check them. Like what? Why do you need to know the exact This is numbers? supposed to be your proof. This is super easy to do. Anyone yes. can do this and yes. you don't know the numbers? Why would I need to know the numbers to, to, to build a ham radio and to bounce signals off the moon? Like you want the exact numbers that you should get when you build this? Like this is not hard to find. I thought this was your evidence, T-Jump. What was the numbers that prove the earth is a globe, bro? Like you have dude, probably dude. 400 people watching. Surely you've got some numbers. No, I don't need any numbers. That's not how arguments work. You don't need numbers, Nathan. Like you can do the numbers on your own. I'm literally telling you how to do the experiment for yourself to find the numbers yourself. I don't need to give you the exact numbers. Like who, who cares what the numbers are? I'm literally telling you, here's exactly how you prove the earth is round. It's easy to do. You can do it in your backyard. You can do all the math yourself and find the numbers and you're going to get the results that the world is round. Like I don't need to provide you the numbers, Nathan. I just gave you the entire method and how to prove the world is round for yourself. Like, is there, is there a problem with that method, Nathan? Do, do radio waves not work? Does triangulation not work? Where is the problem in this, in this chain of reasoning, Nathan? Go ahead. Okay. Are you done asking questions? Cause you asked like 10 questions at once and, and I don't know when you're done. So are you done? Sure. Great. Moderator. Are you familiar with what a burden of proof reversal fallacy is? You're asking me. Yes. Are you familiar with a burden of proof reversal fallacy? I don't, I think people often is over like overuse the term fallacy and it's not what I'm into, but I, I understand like flipping the burden of proof. Like, okay. So when he says you can do the test, that is a perfect poster child stereotype example for burden of proof reversal fallacy where T jump and he blindly believes people on YouTube. He doesn't have any of the numbers for hasn't verified it. And then tells me, Nate, it's super easy. It costs less than $10,000. You can go do it as if everyone just has under $10,000 laying around to go shoot radar waves off the moon and somehow confirm Earth's a globe. I mean, are we going to spend the entire day on radar that he hasn't tested? Or can we move to a topic that I've tested for the last five years? Well, I have tested it. As I told you before, this is something I have done. I don't have, if you want, I can make a YouTube video of doing it too. But remember, the reason I'm using this example is because the flurfs, I don't mean that as a pejorative. If it is, I apologize. The, the flat earthers claim that they want an example of something that they themselves can do. So I'm giving you an example of something you yourself can do because that's what you ask for in every single debate. You want something that you can do. So I'm giving you something that you can do that's relatively cheap. You can rent one for a lot less than 10000 if you need, if you need money. You can ask uh, Red's rhetoric. He will give you the money to test this for yourself. Um, so this, so the reason I'm giving you something that you can do is because that's what you ask for in every debate, Nathan. I'm not I'm not trying to shift the burden of proof here. I've given you the evidence. I've given you the methodology. I've given you the external evidence, the videos where you can literally see the calculations and how they do this themselves. They have it available, uh, but that's not what you care about. You never care about those things because you don't trust them. You want something you can test yourself, and that's what I provided you. called a burden of proof reversal fallacy you can't show me any evidence of you testing it but you keep saying how easy it is for everyone to test it and you can go do it literally a burden of proof reversal fallacy so 
We're going to move on from that burden of proof reversal fallacy that T-Jump doesn't know the numbers for because I can't test it live in front of 400 people for you to confirm with the moon that the floor we walk on is curving in all directions. So we're going to move on to the next topic, T-Jump. Are you ready? Uh, I didn't present any other evidence, so I don't know why you're bringing up other evidence. Like, you have to refute what I said. Like, if there is... Oh, I'm not allowed to bring up evidence? Right, because I did... Remember, I'm the one bringing up the positive case, as you said in my intro. You said T-Jump's doing the opening because he has the positive position that the Earth is round. So I presented my evidence the Earth is round. You saying you don't like that isn't a counter argument. So, so you'd have to show there's some philosophical error in the methodology mm -hmm. I used here saying that I didn't present the numbers. Reg rhetoric has present the numbers to you a number of times. You don't accept the numbers. So, so it's, it's a waste of time for me to present the numbers to you. But what I can do is I can tell you how you can test this for yourself, which is literally what you ask for in every video. So unless you can show there's some philosophical problem with using radar to measure the distance of the moon and then to triangulate the size of the earth and the shape of the earth, if you think that's impossible or you think there's some kind of problem with that, that, then, then that would be a good counter argument to present. If radar works exactly how we think radar works and we can use radar off the moon, which, which is demonstrably true, then it's pretty easy to know you could calculate the shape of the earth doing this because it's, it's, it's how radar works. Like, do, do you think radar doesn't work? Can you hear us, Nathan? Are you done, bro? What? I think he said he's hey, he done, just keeps bro. asking me if I do if I don't think radar works. James, Jay Tolan, who has twenty thousand subscribers, said he became a flat earther looking at data from radar because he was getting information working for the government that that would debunk the globe model. Guys, very sensitive information. He literally like couldn't even put on his YouTube. But so radar doesn't prove you live on a globe. You have no evidence. First, you said you didn't know the numbers. You didn't need to give them to me. Then you said red rhetoric has given them to me numerous times. I just dismissed the numbers. OK, so you don't know the numbers. So don't say I dismiss the numbers. I'm asking you what the numbers are. And you still haven't given any numbers. You say you can go do the test. I don't know if you know this, T-Jump, but we're in the middle of a debate with like 400 people watching. I'm not just going to go build a $10,000 radar system in the backyard for the next three days while everyone's waiting on the debate. So, James, can we move to another topic, please? I'm open Otherwise, to I, I, I'm done. To, I'm done. If you guys want to move to another topic, we can. Well, well again, my topic... Great. I got, like, argument, 10 more. So, so my I got argument 10 more. isn't about the numbers. It's about the philosophical methodology here. Are you saying mm -hmm. that radar doesn't work? Because if, if radar works, if we can bounce radar off the moon. Moderator, wait, wait, he's going wait, back to wait, the same wait, topic. Wait, don't I told you I'm not talking about let's, anymore. Let's give him a chance. Let's, 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 give him, let's give him a chance and we'll talk about that later. We we can switch into the other topic, but I, I do want to give him a chance to finish this. And then okay, we can great. move on to the next one if you want. So so my argument is, is that if radar works in the way that we know it works, and if we can bounce radar off the moon, and if triangulation works, we can then use those three things to calculate the shape of the Earth accurately, and we've done so. Here's a method that you can test it too. Uh, the question is, is do you think any of those methodologies, radar, bouncing radar off the moon or triangulation, are any of those false? Are any of those, because if they're not, then we've already proven that the world is round and you can confirm this yourself. So the question is, is do you think any of those are false? Yes or no? James, are we moving on to the next topic now? Well, I'd like you to answer the question then, sure. I've already answered it 10 times. James, are we moving on to the next topic now? This is not your turn to talk to you, John. If you don't want to answer, that's okay. We can go to the next topic. I've already answered it 10 nope. times, bro. I'm, I'm, not, gonna, I'm not moving forward into yes, the next topic. Yes, radar works. You haven't given us any numbers that prove bouncing radar off the moon proves the surface of Earth curves in all directions. So since this is a flat first globe debate, I'd like to talk after 45 minutes about the surface of Earth. Can we talk about the surface of Earth? James? Sure. Wait, wait. So my question was... is It's not T-Jump. It's not your turn. Hold on. All right. So, are we moving so, on to hold the on. next topic? Nathan, Nathan, quiet. So, uh, Tom, he asked for your numbers. If you don't have the numbers, I, that's what his response is, apparently. So... We, well, he answered the first part of my question. So I asked if radar works. He said, yes, that's great. I'm happy with that. Can we bounce radar off the moon? He, if he doesn't know, that's fine too. Um, and does triangulation work? So those are the three parts of my question. I want th Those are the last two are the things I'm looking for. Can we bounce radar off the moon or does he think we can't? And does triangulation, radar triangulation work? Those are the two things I'm looking for here. It's, it's literally a broken record. So next topic, James. That's up to you. 
Yeah, great. I want to talk about the surface of Earth because he asserts it's curving in all directions. And when I was young, they said boats go over the curve of the Earth. Now, I have a very simple question for you. Doesn't take a $10,000 thingamajiggy in the backyard that you don't have and you don't have any numbers for. Is the horizon the curve of the Earth? Is, yes or no? I don't know what that means. Is the horizon the curve of the Earth? Those are two different things. The horizon is where the the atmosphere and the sky meets the earth when you can see it the curve of the earth is something significantly more complicated than that okay so what you're saying is when we look at the horizon that's not the geometric curve of the earth right it's just your eyes it's the way your eyes right. interpret stuff excellent boats don't go over the curve excellent so uh, can i ask why stars twinkle on the heliocentric model S stars twinkle yeah why do they is twinkle on the heliocentric model, you know? What do you mean by twinkle? I mean, when you look at them, they're twinkling. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. Have you ever heard of that song? You mean like getting like, getting brighter and dimmer? That's Is that what you mean by twinkle? You don't know what twinkle means. Do I need to look up the definition of twinkle for you? Live for in it. front of 400 please, people? Please, I, I would appreciate it. What, what do you mean by twinkle? Is that just... No problem. I'll get you the definition with my iPhone. So, so is that what you mean? That it's just getting brighter and dimmer? Is that what you mean by twinkle? I'll get you the definition, T-Jump, so there's no confusion here, okay? Okay. Define twinkle for T-Jump. Okay, it's shine with a gleam that varies repeatedly between bright and faint. So, T-Jump, I'll ask again. Why do stars twinkle on your model? Lots of different reasons. Some of them uh, change density, and so the amount of energy they're releasing is increasing and decreasing. Some of them get blocked by gas clouds, so it decreases the amount of light that they receive. Some of them get blocked by like eclipses, like when the moon passes in front of the sun, it becomes dimmer. Um, there's lots of different reasons. Okay, so did you know that mainstream science asserts it's turbulence in the atmos? That would be one of the reasons, yes. Different air densities can block amounts of the light, yes. Excellent, excellent, T-Jump. So turbulence in the atmos causes lights in the distance to flicker or twinkle, right? Yes. All right, great. How come uh, Jupiter doesn't twinkle? Jupiter isn't emitting light. Jupiter isn't emitting light. I mean, when I look at it with my P1000, it sure looks like a light. Is the ISS emitting light? Because the ISS doesn't twinkle. Is the sun emitting light? Because the sun definitely doesn't twinkle, T-Jump. The sun does twinkle. Like when the moon comes in front of it, it dims. And when the moon moves away from it, it brightens. That's what twinkle means. The reason that stars are so far away, the twinkle is barely noticeable, is because of how far away they are. Uh, Jupiter does twinkle in the fact that yes things pass in front of it and decrease the amount of brightness that it emits or reflects from the sun and so it does decrease in brightness jupiter does twinkle but not like something doesn't pass in front of the entire thing to make it look like it's dimming enough for you to notice it can you show me the sun twinkling yes it's called an eclipse uh that's the sun being blocked by the moon okay i don't know if you know this but Every night, the stars twinkle all the time. If the sun twinkles, you don't need the moon to block it in order for it to twinkle. So can you show me the sun twinkling during, show me twinkling during eclipse. When does it twinkle during eclipse? I've watched eclipses. So the definition of twinkle you just read is that there are changes in brightness and intensity of the light. When the sun is blocked by the moon, that's a changeness in brightness and intensity of the lights. That would be twinkling. That's the same kind of twinkling. Yep, but T-Jump, we already asserted that turbulence in the Atmos causes the twinkling of the stars. Now, the Atmos is always moving around above your head. It's inhomogeneous and anisotropic. It's always changing and moving in all directions. So, why doesn't the sun twinkle all the time? Because you asserted earlier, things twinkle because of turbulent Atmos above our head. Well, the sun always has turbulent Atmos between you and it. Uh, you don't so need to clip turbulent Atmos. Okay. So Introducing the clip is a new reason. 
you know, I started, I started with that. So I started with, there's lots of reasons that literally what I said first, there are lots of reasons. And then you brought up the turbulence, which is one reason too. So if there is something with not a lot of light and different air densities can reflect the not a lot of light very easily, it can make it twinkle. Yes. So like a flashlight in the distance, if you get fog or something, it'll make the flashlight look like it's going to twinkle. If you have a, uh, big lighthouse, a lot of fog isn't going to make it look like it's going to twinkle because it's not enough to reflect enough of a light to dim it so that your eyes don't see it anymore. So it's just pretty simple. Like there's not as much light coming from stars. And so it takes less to cause them to dim. There's a lot of light coming from the sun. So it takes more to cause it to dim. Okay, great. So uh, you know what local light illumination is? Uh, nope. Okay, when you see a city off in the distance at night, the entire horizon isn't illuminated. There's a local light illumination. If you ever drive to Vegas at night, you can see Vegas all lit up. It doesn't light up the entire horizon. Now I'm curious, T. Jump, when we observe a sunset, does the sun light up the entire horizon or is the light from the sun small and localized, like Las Vegas? Uh, the entire horizon, I would imagine. <laughs> Oh, really? The entire horizon is lit up after the sun sets. After That's the, interesting. After the sun sets? Or during the sunset. You think the sun illuminates the entire horizon left to right equally? Are you serious? Have you ever looked at the sunset, bro? Do you ever leave that couch? Yes. So the the sunset is literally the 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 leave the shadow of the sun where it stops emitting light is the entire point of the horizon so obviously like where you're standing could affect the shape of the sunset like if you're standing on the horizon you could actually watch it move like the shadow could come and pass you so so but it, it would if you were standing perpendicular to it yeah it would light up the whole horizon okay well that's not what we observe anyone can observe that it's local light illumination similar to vegas off in the distance when the sun sets it doesn't illuminate the entire horizon the sun is not bigger than earth it's small and localized that's why we have crepuscular rays t jump i'm curious are sun rays parallel or are they converging uh what do you mean when the sun rays hit the earth are they parallel to one another or are they converging it's it's a wave it's light so they're waves. They're waves. Are they traveling in straight lines parallel to one another, like mm -hmm. Aristophanes said with his well uh, experiment? Waves. Or are understand. they converging? So, so they're waves. They don't. Waves don't travel, travel in straight lines. Yes. Okay. So light from the sun is not parallel. Aristophanes didn't prove the Earth's a ball. That's what you're saying. I, I have no idea what you're asking. Because he says they were parallel. Um, Aristophanes asserted sun rays are parallel. Okay, what is, I don't understand how this is relevant to the topic. Like, what, why, why are you saying that? Like, yes, you he can allegedly interpret. measured. Go ahead. He allegedly measured the earth 2,000 years ago. You haven't heard of yes. Aristophanes? Y yes, what is, what does this have to do with light being a wave or a particle? You're the one talking about waves and particles, bro. I just asked you if they're parallel or converging. T jump and you keep changing the topic, diverting, rambling, asking 10 questions at a time without stopping and letting me answer and then interrupting me. Brilliant, bro. Good job. Bravo. I haven't asked any questions yet. I don't think so. What do you, by parallel and converging, what I interpret you to mean is that like, are they straight lines like particles or do they converge like waves and interact with each other? And so I, that's, that's how I interpreted the question. Did you mean something different by that question? Did you just say, are they straight lines like particles? Particles are straight lines? Particles move in straight lines. Like if you have just a particle, it's just like a rock and you throw it, it can travel in a straight line in space. Yes. A rock is a particle? A rock is an object made of particles. If you take a single particle. Okay, listen, real, real carefully, okay? When the sun comes onto Earth, do the rays go like this or do they go like this? Do they go like this, parallel? This is parallel, right? Parallel to one another. Or do the sun rays go like this, not parallel, intersecting, converging? It, it's a it's a wave. Like if you drop a rock in water and you see a wave, wave. I don't, I don't, it's wave. So, so I don't understand your question. So light, light is a wave. It moves are like water. the waves parallel or are they converging? 
I don't know what that, I don't know how you could have parallel waves. I don't understand what that means. It's like water. If you, if you drop oh, a okay, rock in water, it ripples. Anything. All right, cool. Aristotle no, no, didn't prove no, anything. I, I Are you familiar with Ken Wheeler and Mr. Magnetism? I don't understand what I know you're you saying okay. there. So the whether or not light it. is a... Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. There's too much interrupting. Too much interrupting. All right. So, so, so we're going to give Tom a chance to respond, a minute or two, and then we'll do the same for you, Nathan. So whether or not light is a wave or a particle doesn't change the effectiveness of Aristosthenes' experiment. So I don't know. I don't know why you think that matters. I don't. I'm not following what you're saying here. You just keep saying is light uh, converging or parallel, and then somehow assuming that this matters to the Aristosthenes tests. I just don't think you understand how light works. It's a wave. It, it doesn't. It's it's like water. It, it moves everywhere. So I don't understand how, like, could you explain you your that. connection to Aristophanes and the light being straight or parallel thing? I don't, I don't get it. I know you don't get it. Audience, I want you to get this, okay? I'm asking T-Jump if the rays from the sun go like this and are parallel or if they go like this and are converging and we've spent like five minutes on it and he's still confused. Okay, so we'll just move on. Did you know, uh, how hot's the thermosphere? According uh, to your religion. Outside uh, layer of the sun, above the sun? That it's hotter than the surface the of the sun? The thermosphere, you don't know what that is? Nope. What is the thermosphere? It's hotter than the surface of the sun. What is the thermosphere? Is that what you're asking? The layer of the outside of the sun? Is that what it is? Or is this... What's yeah, the according to your religion, we have a la earth, the air allegedly layers out, Okay. And we have yep. something called the thermosphere. I was asking you if you know how hot it is in the thermosphere, Fahrenheit or Celsius. Either one works. Nope, no idea. What What is the temperature? Oh, okay, how roughly 4,000 degrees Fahrenheit. So do you, you were talking about we can send satellites. Anyone can do this. We have satellites in space. Do you know what metals they use for that in satellites? Aluminum. That's one of them. Good guess. And steel. You don't know any other ones? Well, titanium, gold, gold, copper. So, did you, do you know the melting temperature for aluminum, T Jump? Uh, 100 and something do degrees. Do you know the melting temperature for aluminum, T Jump? 100 and something degrees. The melting temperature for aluminum is 100 and something degrees? Celsius? Yeah, I think so. Are you serious? Is that not right? What is, what is the melting temperature for okay, aluminum? Okay, great. Well, you just told. You're, you're breaking up. I can't. Hear I think you. it's a lot higher than that. But T jump, T jump. You just, the thermosphere is four thousand degrees. They can't send metal that melts at a hundred and something degrees Celsius through a four thousand degree medium. Uh, yeah. So so they do it during the when this planet is blocking the rays from the sun, so it's not that hot. So you're saying they launch them at night so the thermosphere is not hot? Yeah, so it's only hot if it's being exposed to radiation from the sun. If it's not being exposed from radiation from the sun, it's not hot. So they go to the areas that are not hot where it's being blocked by the electromagnetic radiation from the Earth. The electromagnetic field, yes. Did you know that thermosphere is a layer of Earth's atmos, bro? Did you know that? And it goes yeah. all the way around the Earth? Sure, and it has different temperatures at different locations. Okay, and it's a specific... It's a specific temperature. It ranges from like 3,000 to 4,000 degrees. Uh, no. So, so if like if the sun is being blocked by <laughs> no. the earth, then the temperature drops significantly. TJ, you didn't even know what the temperature was, bro. Sure. I asked you and you didn't even know. Sure, but I know now the temperature is caused by the sun. Heat. Yes. Heat, heat is generated by the sun. Heat, sun emits heat. Sun heats things up. If blocked by the sun... Gets cooled down. Very simple. Very simple, right, T-Jump? Okay, I got yes. a very simple question for you. When you move away from a fire, which is hot, does it get hotter or colder? Colder. Colder, right? Excellent. Now, the sun's above our heads. When you fly in an airplane, you're between the sun and someone on the ground. Right, T-Jump? Sure. Okay, let's say it's roughly 90, 100 degrees on the ground. Do you have any idea how cold it is in the airplane? Uh, very cold. Around Very cold. Now, interesting, T-Jump, you just told me 
when you move away from a fire, it gets colder and that the sun is hot. Yes. But the airplane moved closer to the sun and the airplane got cold. Yes. Do you notice a contradiction in there, T-Jump, or do I need to explain it? Nope. There's yeah, no that's a contradiction big contradiction. There. There. No, no, because heat is maintained when it hits something and warms something up. There's this thing called the ground, which gets heated up like an oven. And so, like, if you're in an oven and you're close to the thing that's trapping all of the heat, it's going to be hot like the fire. So the fire is actually like the, the ground because it's absorbing the heat. The atmosphere, there's nothing there to get hot, so there's nothing there to radiate heat, so it's cold. Okay, you just said there's nothing in the atmosphere. I don't know if you know this, but the atmosphere is full of gas, um, so that definitely can heat up. Yeah. You yeah, agree so gas can heat up, right, T-Jump? Yes. Okay, great. So gas if you move track, up in the gas... Ga gas doesn't heat up like again? cement does. Cement, cement makes things harder, so, so the sun hits cement, cement heats up like an oven, and it stores the heat. And the air does not store the heat. It's a very bad conductor for heat. So cement is hotter than gases when it's exposed to the sun. Okay, but T-Jump, you just told me when you move away from heat, it gets colder. Yes, unless there is something trapping the heat, like cement, which is going to make it hotter. So, so if you're near something <laughs> okay. trapping the heat, so it'll be warm. And if you're not near something trapping the heat, it will be cold. So cement traps heat. So, so if you're near the ground, it's warm. Go ahead. So you're saying that the heat comes from the ground, not the sun. Yes. Well, the, the rays oh. come from the sun, and then the sun, the rays hit the earth, and then the earth stores the heat. So it traps the heat. It gets heated up, whereas the air does not get heated up as much. And so it's easier to store the heat in the cement and the ground, which can maintain the heat. And so it's warmer on the ground than it is high in the air because the air doesn't have anything to store the heat. Oh, interesting. Because you said earlier that the sun was hot. And then I asked you, when you move away from something that's hot, do you get hotter or colder? And you said colder. Then when I said, when you go on the airplane, how hot or cold is it? And you said very cold when it's a hundred degrees on the surface of the earth, T-Jump. I find that very interesting. It kind of sounds like you're agreeing with me that, that the heat isn't actually coming from the sun. It's coming from the earth. So, so if you put a rock in a fire, it gets hot, right? And then if you take the rock out and put it over to the side, it's still hot. So if you walk from the fire to the rock, you'll actually get colder because you're moving away from the fire and then you'll get hotter because you're moving closer to the rock because there's another source of heat it's it's trapped the heat from the fire so if you're moving away from the fire you get colder but then you move closer to the rock you get hotter so if the big rock is floating in space and it's hot and you move away from the hot rock it gets colder even though you're moving a tiny tiny bit closer to the fire okay are you done yes yes all right cool have you heard of ken wheeler mr magnetism he's got two hundred thousand nope. subs no nope. Okay, well, he did a test with a FLIR. Do you know what a FLIR is? No. Okay, it picks up a heat signature, like kind of how Terminator, when he looks through his glasses, he can pick up heat signatures and tell when bad guys are like behind walls and behind bushes and stuff. Um, so check this out, T-Jump. He tested moonlight with a FLIR, which picks up a heat signature and verified. Now, this guy's a globe head. He verified moonlight is measurably cold, colder than the shade. Did you know that? uh no yeah i've tested it too uh you can do it for 30 bucks with a laser thermometer moonlight's measurably four to ten degrees colder than the sun depending on how what time of year it is how close it is and like how, what phase it's in um so yeah you, you should test that sometime cold moonlight i don't i don't know what that even means so okay do you know what a sun analema is nope don't don't understand how well, your previous argument is in any way relevant to anything we've said so far. So so let's say that this this like it's it's dumb to say that the moonlight itself is colder. Like no, the moonlight itself is not colder. The moonlight is just light, and it can heat things up if it has energy, and if it doesn't have energy, it can't heat things up. So, but it's obviously going to heat things up more than the shade is for sure. So, but I don't understand how this is relevant to anything I said or or that you've said at all. You just. You just said it's going to heat things up more than the shade, and I just told you the shade is hotter than the moonlight. 
moonlight is cold. You could test it with the FLIR, which you didn't even know what it was, or you could do a laser thermometer, which I've done. It's thirty dollars. You have no idea what you're talking about. Let's move on to sun analemma. Do you know what a sun analemma is? No. Let's move on to what this has to do with the topic. You just said that the shade is going to be colder than the moonlight. It's yeah. the opposite. You okay. haven't tested it. I was just letting you know you should go test it. Do you know what a sun analemma is? Wait, wait. I'm still still not seeing how this is relevant to the topic. Is this just random fact week? Like, would you like some random facts that you don't know, Nathan? Because I, I have plenty of them. But is this? Is that okay? Let me let me let me clue you in on why this is relevant. Yes. Let me clue you please, in real quick because you're confused. Okay. Yes. On your model, the moon, allegedly 2,160 miles in diameter, which is six times six times 60, observed from the Earth, which has a circumference in statute miles of 21,600, which is six times six times 600. They say that ball, which back in the Old Testament was a false god they used to sacrifice children to, they say that ball in space is reflecting sunlight. Now, we just talked forever about how hot a sun is and how it heats things up and that it's not actually the, the sun that's hot, but the rays hit the concrete and heat the concrete up, right? Well, if the rays are hitting the moon and heating the moon up, moonlight wouldn't be measurably cold. You could test it with a FLIR or a laser thermometer. Ken Wheeler's a globe head and he verified this for us. I've also tested it myself. It was on my old YouTube channel that got deleted. If I find the video, I'll make sure I get it right back up. I'll probably just do the test again. That'd probably be easier. But yeah, do you understand now, T-Jump? Are you not confused? Nope, because this was pretty much pretty easily explained on Google. Like you can find that, yeah, air yeah. contains heat. It measures heat more than the light itself does. Like, I don't understand why this is relevant to the Earth being a globe or flat. Like, yes, this is an explained phenomenon that we know about in science. That's very easy to explain. What does this have to do with? That's right. You're so confused. So we'll move on. Do you know what I you're still confused, T-Jump. I tried yes, to explain yes, I'm it. I'm still confused because you haven't explained how this is in any way relevant to the world being flat. Like, I've already disproved your argument. Like, you can't in any, any way address the evidence I presented, which proves the world is round, and that you yourself can test to show the world is round, and you're just bringing up random facts that don't have anything to do with the topic. Like, okay. Well, that was a cool burden of proof reversal fallacy, again, telling me There's I can no go test thing. your evidence. Why are you talking know. in the middle of me talking, bro? Again. Well, there's no such thing as a burden of proof reversal fallacy. There's a burden of proof fallacy, as I think is what you mean to say. See, John, do you know what a sun analemma is? Nope. No, you don't? Okay, well, if you track the sun for a year, it makes a loop, a figure eight loop. It's actually got a smaller loop in the north and a larger loop in the south, and the points in the north are not equidistant to the points in the south. Now, the reason that is, is because we live on a flat earth with the sun rotating around polar center, moving between the tropics, alternating every six months. That's why we have seasons. That's why we have sun analemas. That's why the fauna and the flora is drastically different in the north than it is in the south. In the south, it's pretty much just ice and penguins. In the north, that's where the reindeer are. You get trees and all sorts of other vegetation and plants and animal life. Not happen in Antarctica. Also, on average, Antarctica is 50 degrees colder than the north. Now, if we were tilted 23.4, which if you subtract that from 90, it's 66.6. We're on a ball tilted in space. The heat would distribute rather evenly 93 million miles away from the sun. That's so hot, according to T-Jump. But we would also have equal fauna and flora on each side and pretty much the same temperature variations. But we don't. I'm sorry you didn't know what a sun analemma was, T-Jump. Did you have any other arguments we could go over? Well, yeah, you want to talk about mostly Corey? what you just said is, is just delusional. Like there's a magnetic field around the earth, which changes the way the sun heats the earth. So obviously it's not going to heat equally. That's that's dumb. Um, but anyway, that still doesn't in any way disprove my, my evidence that does prove the world is round with radio waves. Like anyone can do this. You're making a bunch of nonsense arguments. That you can do it. Here we go. You can go right? do it. It's so easy. Interrupting. 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 So again, like I presented evidence. You just said you, you, you're ignorant of it. You can't do it. You're not an expert. Right, Nathan, so. you got to let him finish. 
So, so you, if you don't understand it, that's up to you. I, you should go research it and understand it since it proves your worldview false. And you bring up random facts that don't in any way have anything to do with what I said, isn't evidence against what I said. And yeah, I, I literally explained all these things to you. So if you don't understand them, that's your problem. Like, I don't, I don't care. Like, yeah, my magnetic radiation, magnetic fields explains the differences in heats of certain areas of the earth. Very simple, not hard to understand. Yes, moving further away from a fire gets colder unless you're moving closer to a rock, which is hotter. Very simple to understand. Like none of this is really complicated and none of it in any way is evidence for the world being flat. And none of it refutes the proof that I gave that the world is round. So I don't know why you're bringing any of this random stuff up. It's just like random dictionary facts, like, okay. Yeah, I know you're confused. All right, well, let's just move on to question and answer because T-Jump's too confused to have a conversation with. We can jump into the Q&A. And, folks, we also want to remind you that our guests are linked in the description. We appreciate our guests. And, as always, want to ask that you would attack the arguments instead of the person, which 99.9% .9 of you, I have to give you a high five for doing that so well already. And we're going to jump into those questions right now. So, thank you very much. This question coming in from two moments. Since we have the 12-hour stream today, it's hard for me to see like where the new questions come in and where the old questions are out, or I should say from the last debate, stop. So this one coming in from Timothy Bryce says T-Jump plus Nathan equals epic. Thanks, James. Appreciate that. Our pleasure. Bubblegum Gun says, let's see, we got that one. Tim Pryor, thanks for your question, said, all right, I'm going to play a game. We got that one. That was from the last debate. Hold on there. Sam Harris's Bulldog, thanks for your super chat side. Great win for T-Jump. Eliminative versus eliminative re versus reductive materialism. What are your thoughts, T-Jump? I'm really curious about your opinion on this topic. Uh, I don't really have a position on eliminative versus reduction of materialism. Like I think that uh, it's pretty much up to the person. It's just a philosophical position. I think that until you make testable predictions one way or the other, it's just kind of philosophical meandering. I prefer reductionism because it's worked more scientifically um but i don't think like we can we should eliminate like consciousness or idea, eliminate the idea that consciousness just doesn't exist and it's a misconception of some kind so gotcha I, I, don't, I don't i wouldn't say that i have a strong position one way or the other jordan gerard thanks for your question says my daughter calls you poopy jump is that Hilarious. an inside joke can I, can I get that on my shirt next up tim Pryor. thank you very much says i like how he says we say flat earthers are too dumb to figure it out, like it's an insult. But flat earthers claim billions and all of science are too dumb to figure it out. Nathan, response? No, that's not true at all, dude. Lots of people are waking up. I've been sharing flat earth for five years. When I used to go out and do activism, one out of 100 people would even listen to what the hell I'm saying. Now it's like one in five people, one in 10 people are already flat earthers. My buddy Trevor went out in Miami. First eight people he shared flat earth with already knew the earth was flat. So I don't know what that guy's talking about at all. Gotcha. This one coming in from Kango24 says, Nathan, please explain the data from satellite oceanography. It clearly shows the oceans are not flat. Please try better than saying cool story. Well, that is a cool story, but we have abyssal plains, which cover half the ocean sea floor. And I don't know why we're talking about the sea floor when the surface of the ocean is not curving in any directions. We have frozen lakes, specular reflections, Suez Canal. We can see the Statue of Liberty from 60 miles away. I mean, did you hear the opener, bro? Come on. This one coming in from Pancake of Destiny says, your fellow flat earther proved the rotation of the earth, Nathan. Why do you disagree? Hashtag thanks, Bob. Well, that's interesting that like it's 2021 and Globers think the only evidence of a rotating earth came from a flat earther who's still a flat earther and they didn't detect or measure earth rotating. They actually detected light deviation. Now, Sagnac, who invented the Sagnac interferometer, that's why his name's in the Sagnac interferometer. He said it was actually the vortex of the ether causing the deviation in the light. Now, if you're going to claim you know more, then the guy who invented the inter interferometer, that's a cool story, bro. But I'm going to go with Sagnac. Also, Bob doesn't claim he proved rotation. Bob knows what's up. You're literally just making stuff up. And you're scientifically illiterate. This one from Kang024 says, Nathan, and by the way, we do want to both 
in both directions. We want to ask that the audience as well as the speakers, you, Nathan, and Tom, not insult each other. King 24 says, Nathan, please give a detailed explanation of what electromagnetic wake is. Please try better than, quote, Google is your friend, bruh. Yeah, of course. Well, they um, this is in relation to why hurricanes spin in opposite directions. Now, all you got to do is, like, take a beer that shot foam on the top, and you pour it down the side of your glass, and the foam will spin in opposite directions. It's a property of fluid dynamics. Now, as the sun traverses around the equator, above the equator, between the tropics, it obviously affects particles in the air and the ground, heats it up. So there would be sort of a wake behind the sun, similar to how when a boat is traveling through water and one side of the wake goes to the left and the other side of the wake goes to the right. Now, hopefully you're happy with that. And all you globe heads that don't understand electromagnetic wakes can stop asking me about it. This you're one welcome. coming in from Tim Pryor says, imagine that. No flat earth proof once again. Just talking about the globe and cherry picking quotes from people that don't claim that the earth is flat. Nathan, any thoughts? Uh, I, don't know if you missed, I don't know if you missed the opener, but we had the Statue of Liberty vis visible from 60 miles out. We have a geographic range table from the U.S. Coast Guard. The FAA states, which is why we use gyroscopes, they keep their rigidity in space, that airplanes are flying level over a non-rotating earth. You can look at a specular reflection you can look at laser observations, but ladies and gentlemen, Globers don't want evidence or facts. They just want to blindly believe someone else did the science. You can do it too, which was Chi Jump's entire argument, this entire debate, a burden of proof reversal for some YouTube video he wanted James to pull up. Next up, Sleepy Dan says, yes, we experience Coriolis, Coriolis effect affects all the time. It's called wind. That's when the air moves at a different speed slash direction than the earth. Uh, I don't know if that person's confused about what Coriolis is. Uh, they don't, it's not the wind. Okay. Just so you know, next up, Tim Pryor says kind of like the floorboard of your car does not move under a drone. If you flew one inside of it. Oh, that, let me read. Yeah. The first if the one. car's not moving, the drone also doesn't move. So that works on both models. Not an argument for both. Question the answer says there is still no curvature measured anywhere ever. T jump, your thoughts? Uh, there's curvature measured in lots of places. The surface of the ocean curves proven. The bottom of the ocean curves. The surface of the earth curves. We can measure curvature in pretty much everywhere. Uh, you just have to use real equipment and real numbers and not make up numbers. Gotcha. This one coming in from Tim Pryor says except that our star charts have shown Polaris to move, Nathan. They say love how he's been told this, but keeps repeating the same stuff. What are you talking about, bro? I went and filmed Polaris through a hole in the Georgia Guidestones, which they built 40 years ago. And, you, and the stars still line up to the pyramids, which were built 2,000 years ago, Orion's Belt. So you have no clue what you're talking about, bro. You're literally just making stuff up. Our star charts, our religious doctrine our paper says look polaris moves no it doesn't i've been doing time lapses for five years stationary to all the other stars which are also constellations don't forget according to your religion all the stars move so you have to deny not only polaris is stationary but that we have constellations so <laughs> welcome to the clown world that's the globe earth this one from kango 24 says so nathan cannot use the genetic fallacy as t jump has done stuff Earth's atmosphere is not adjacent to a vacuum. We have a gradient. Moderator. And where that gradient ends, it would be adjacent to a vacuum. And you can't demonstrate that. It's literally just a dumb belief that you have. Not only has NASA been caught thousands of times faking space, it violates the second law of thermodynamics, but the sky is a map and a clock. Polaris, astroarchaeology, 88 constellations. I mean... You want to blindly believe that we're blasting through the Milky Way universe at a half million miles an hour while gravity pulls everything together and you can't prove that we have stellar parallax, this constellations, and a pole star that lines up with rocks in Georgia? I mean, give me a break, guys. You just got to have eyes to see and ears to hear. Honestly, the truth isn't for everyone. It's just people who have eyes to see and ears to hear. So, This one coming in from... Tim Pryor says, that's a lie. NASA does not say the moon is in our atmosphere. They say the same of our atmosphere reaches to the moon. 
Stop cherry picking the article and read the whole thing, Nathan. All right, I'll look it up, James. Go ahead with the next question. This next question coming in from Question the Answers says, this is for you, Tom, $6.3 million a day and $265,000 an hour NASA gets from us. That alone is disgusting. Anyone who stops ridiculing and seeks truth sees this. Uh, not really. So scientific institutions should get more money from us. The, what's disgusting is the fact that CEOs and companies get significantly more than that. Like NASA only gets like 2% of the federal budget or something very small. So or 0.2%, 0.2% of the federal budget. So it's really not like we should give more money to science because that's why everything works. If we were using flat earth logic, we would still be in the stone age. So the whole point here is that we should be giving money to science and it's disgusting that we don't give more not that we are giving some to it the batman says okay yeah that's i think that one's just trolling not going to read that tim Pryor says claims the earth is flat has not measured it himself and shown the measurements what a hypocrite so much for you must do it yourself argument yeah i've done it at the salt sea the salt flats in utah I tested at Chicago. It's on my old channel that just got deleted. Sorry, I'm battling censorship. Uh, and then also, um, I tested in Florida from 12 foot observer height. I saw water hitting the shore of the ocean five miles out when the horizon should be four miles out. So, dude, you just don't even know what you're talking about. I have better evidence than the stuff I've done, like specular reflections, gyroscopes keep their rigidity in space. The way they make glass is according to fluid statics. You just have to redefine level and say level means curve when the definition of level is free of bends, curves, and irregularities. Synonyms are flat, plumb, flush, straight. So you don't even have straight on your model. No wonder so many Globers can't figure out whether they like boys or girls. It's very apparent. Next up, Kango24 says, let's see, Tim Pryor says, except, oh, we got that, and we got this one. Soldier of Science says, Nathan, please claim this ten dollars from modern day debate only if you invested into your first share of vacq not nasa but the rocket lab merge stock cool story bro hey james can we share my screen real quick sure great so to the globe fundies that say the earth's atmosphere doesn't extend beyond the moon well here from the esa earth's atmosphere stretches out to the moon Earth's atmosphere stretches out to the moon and beyond. That's the ESA, European Space Agency, guys. Space.com, surprise, Earth's atmosphere extends far beyond the moon. Physics.org, Earth's atmosphere stretches out to the moon and beyond. Newsweek, Earth's atmosphere extends far beyond the moon. So in the opener, go back and watch it when T-Jump says, we can bounce radar off things in space like the moon. He has no freaking clue what he's talking about period gotcha and moving on to this next question do appreciate it coming in from kang 24 says nathan t jump is correct a simple google search debunks the last five years of your claims not particularly addressing a uh argument of yours but bubblegum gun says nathan if earth is flat as is water why not make a tower one mile high use a large telescope and spot europe nathan just change it's human to be wrong uh, i don't know what that guy's talking about because jay tolan takes infrared way higher than one mile up he gets in airplanes and he can observe over a thousand miles from the airplane. So again, shout out Jay Tolan. Go check him out. That guy has no idea what he's talking about. Again, bro, Globers are so sad. Next up, question the answer. Says the radio signals work on a flat earth too. Fact, T-Jump. What? They say that the radio signals work on a flat earth just as well. Fact. No. So triangulation literally doesn't work. So... As Nathan said in his intro, the, he said that the moon was not 250,000 miles away. That, that's ridiculous based off of what he said. And you can literally bounce radio waves off the moon and just count the time it takes and you can know it's 250,000 miles away. So it, it doesn't work on any of the flat earth models. 
demonstrably. And you can also use triangulation to show the world's round using it. It can't be explained on the flat earth unless you use magic leprechauns or something. You got it. This one coming in from Josh Wainer says, Nathan, you ran a research group of 125,000 people yet have no basic knowledge of radar. I just said I'm not a specialist. I'm not an expert at radar. Uh, the largest radar system in Russia, the, my buddy went on tour there, and the lady giving the tour says, you can hit the east coast of the U.S. with this. They do that bouncing the radar waves off the sky if you think Earth's a ball. <laughs> Literally just said, if you believe Earth's a ball, that's how they do it. They just bounce it off a non-existent barrier in the sky, and then it comes down to the U.S. Now, I'm sorry, but they're just traveling laterally. That's how the radar waves work. Gotcha. And this one coming, coming in from Mike Billar says, did Nathan find out what an electromagnetic wake is yet? Nathan, Google it. We'll wait. They want to know if you can define electromagnetic wake. Yeah, I already did that like 10 questions ago. Tim Pryor says, where's the evidence of you physically measuring earth is flat, Nathan. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Yeah, if you watch the Clown World Tour, when I was in Florida, I was 12 feet off the ground, and I saw water splashing against the shore 4.9 miles out. Well, according to the Globe Earth, which says we're 24,901 miles in circumference, you do the math for the geometric horizon, that would be 1.225 times the square root of the observer's height and feet, should have been four miles out. So just go watch the video, bro. It's on my Clown World Tour video, and I've done it in like nine states for the last five years. You guys just refuse to test it. And even if I showed you, you'd just be like refraction. It's just refraction. You just, it's the cloudiness and the molecules, particles in the atmosphere lifting up the image, which I don't know if you guys know this, but when there's stuff in the air, it's, it's harder to see. You don't see farther. That's an inversion of reality. Just like everything with them, they don't know what's up and what's down because up is according is down according to people in Australia and downs up according to people in America for people in Australia. It's literally an upside down world. They've inverted everything. You well, I just it. wanted to add real quick. I found NASA's definition of space, which is 12 miles below the Kármán line, 62 miles above uh, sea level, which means the moon is in space. Next up, thank you very much for your question. This one coming in from Tim Pryor says, where's the evidence... No, we got that. Michael Dresden says, uh, Jeez, all right, I guess technically they're not personally attacking. They say T-Jump with the reversal of burden of proof fallacy. Yeah, so there is no such thing as the reversal of burden of proof fallacy. There is a burden of proof fallacy, which is when you're reversing the burden of proof. But there's no such thing as a reversing the burden of proof fallacy. That's not a thing. Um, I think Nathan's just confused on the terminology there. So there is a burden of proof fallacy, which is when you're changing the burden of proof that you have to say that the other person has to prove you wrong or whatever. And that is a burden of proof fallacy. And I was not doing that. I was literally just providing the method that has already been demonstrated with a video where they have demonstrated it. And so that is the real evidence. So I've met my burden of proof. And then I also said, you can do this too. That was kind of the point here is that because Nathan and the flat earthers always say, we want something we can do. Here is an example of this. So it's not a burden of proof fallacy. I've, I've met it by already providing the examples. Gotcha. And thank you very much for your question. Mike Billar says, Nate, why are you always so mad? Calm down. It's just a YouTube discussion, bruh. You'll be all right, bruh. Uh, I don't know if I seem mad. Uh, I don't know. I wasn't. I just think it's goofy how Glovers have to redefine flat and say it means curved and redefine level and say it means curved because that's literally what McToon did in his argument with my friend Flatter Day Saints. Uh, T Jump will literally say the moon's in space but then say the moon's in the atmosphere also like at the same time in the same breath so it's just uh kind of frustrating when you're it's, you're just debating liars like blatant liars that contradict the can't say two sentences without the second one contradicting the first it's pathetic next up thank you very much for your question coming in from mike billars we got that one this one coming in from tim Pryor says flat earthers are trying to convince people that billions and all of science are wrong, that they're the only ones smart enough to figure it out. Burden of proof is always on them. Yeah, cool. 
And you can go outside and test it yourself. Everything I've talked about, fluid statics, we see too far, the Statue of Liberty, Suez Canal, specular reflections. I don't know if you guys have ever seen a reflection off a body of water, but if you do, get back to me and let me know if you think it's curving. That's funny. Juicy. Tim Pryor says, Nathan and all flat earthers demand proof that Earth is a globe when all the information is at their fingertips. Simply ask for measurements of flatness and you'll hear crickets. Nathan, is this true? No, I already talked about the black swan, uh, the fact that we see too far, specular reflections, a geographic range table from the U.S. Coast Guard. The FAA says they fly over flat, non-rotating Earths. I've seen Chicago skyline, which should have been completely hidden from New Buffalo, 49 miles away. So, I mean, I, glass, uh, how they make glass. Guys, what are you talking about? You guys don't listen to anything. This is sad. Mike Filler says, Nathan, did you steal the P-1000? What is a P-1000? A P-1000 yeah. is a handy-dandy camera, but no, I mean, I don't really steal anything. Never got charged for stealing anything. Don't have a record of stealing anything. No one has any evidence I've ever stolen anything. Um, honestly, everything I need, the creator freely gives me um, as long as I try and do his will. Psalm 1 says, blessed is the man who walks not in the path of the unrighteous, who doesn't stand with sinners or sit with the scornful. Um, he'll be like a tree planted by the waters. He will bear forth fruit in its season, but it will not be so for the unjust. Their life's going to be full of calamity. So, yeah, I mean, I've had two P900s and a P1000, been a full-time flat earther for like two years. Um, it's pretty cool. I like what I do. So gotcha. why would I steal a camera? Andrew Roos says, Nathan, fall fallacy this, fallacy that, reverse user reverse underhand forward eyelid leg bone fallacy listening and so they uh they don't approve of you your use of the word fallacy i think now mike billar says i want to see james twinkle i don't know what that means but <laughs> mike billar says also nathan polaris declines one degree for every 111 kilometers south that you go this is a necessary and sufficient or th i mean this is necessary and sufficient for a globe Prove it wrong, and we'll believe you. Well, that's a perfect spoken like a true Glober. We'll believe you. Well, I don't know if you knew this, Glober, but things also descend towards the horizon as they move away from you on a flat Earth. I don't know if you've ever been on a really long street and looked at the street lights, but the street lights in the distance appear smaller and lower than the street lights that are right next to you and above your head. So, congratulations. Welcome to flat Earth. Gotcha. And Caleb Bad Faith says T Jump isn't Nathan right about stars twinkling because of turbulence in the atmosphere, especially after you factor in Alden's number. Uh, Alden's number isn't a real thing, but technically, yes, there much of this twinkling in the stars is caused by air density changes in the atmosphere. That is true. It's not the only reason. There's lots of other reasons. Next up. Kango 24 says, twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. You are a big ball of hydrogen. Moderator. Then Tim Pryor says, have you measured the earth yourself, Nathan? Have you, have you, have you, have you? Other people have done it. Uh, James. Have you, hold on one second. Have you done it yourself? Have you done it yourself? Nathan's entire argument. Okay, cool. Can we screen share again? Yeah. Great. As light from a star races through our atmosphere, which is a big and question fallacy, gas has no inherent shape. It bounces and bumps through the different layers, bending the light before you see it. Since hot and cold layers of air keep moving, the bending of light changes too, which causes stars appearance to wobble or twinkle. Now, none of that is the moon moving in front of things. None of that is lots of reasons, star twinkle. Ladies and gentlemen, there is one reason, according to Globe Earth Priest, that stars twinkle. It's turbulence in our atmosphere. Now, I don't know if you guys know this, the sun, the, well, not anymore, the moon's in Earth's atmosphere. But, well, then the ISS. Good. So what holds the uh, gas to Earth's atmosphere, uh, the gas to Earth's surface, T-Jump? Gravity. Oh, really? Did you know on the ISS they experience almost zero gravity? Because they're in space. 
Um, but the moon is not in space, it's in Earth's atmosphere. It extends far beyond the moon. Did you see all those articles I just quoted and pointed so, out so five minutes ago? I just, I just pulled up the NASA definition of space, which is 12 miles below the Kármán line, which is 62 miles above the mm. surface of sea level, which is space. So that's even though that's also a part of the atmosphere, it's also a part of space, which is also a part of the solar system. So, so those aren't contradictions, uh, Nathan. You can be in the atmosphere and still be in space. Those are not the contradictory terms. A part so of the Earth's atmosphere, in atmosphere is in space. Yes. Yeah, but the people in the ISS experience zero gravity. They float around and they show you how the microphone spins with zero gravity. But you just said that the atmosphere is held to Earth by gravity. Yeah. And the atmosphere extends beyond the moon. Yeah, so they experience near zero gravity. They don't experience zero gravity. Near they zero gravity. Near zero gravity. And so, oh, so like they're slightly like pulled towards the Earth or slightly pulled towards the sun. How does it work, T.J.? Right, they're slightly pulled towards the Earth. It looks to me the like Earth, they're floating. Which is why the ISS has to orbit the Earth because it's pulled towards the Earth. And if it didn't orbit, it would just fall straight in. So yes, they do experience gravity. So there's gravity on the ISS. They're not free floating. There, there is gravity on the ISS, but it's not enough to cause them to be pulled towards the, the ground of the ISS. Oh, okay. So it's negligible. It's enough to hold the gas to Earth's surface, but not pull down astronauts, which have way more mass than gas particles, right? Uh, yeah. So, so it's it can okay. hold things that are lighter in from further away because there's less gravity. So if something's further away, it takes less gravity to hold it if it's lighter. If it's heavier, it takes more gravity to hold it. So if holding air in at a long distance is very easy because it's very light. So the lighter it is, the easier it is to hold in with gravity because it takes less force. Gravity is not a force. Even according to your religion, it's not a force. Gravity no. is literally one of the four fundamental forces. It was superseded by Einstein. He says it was the bending of space-time in a pseudo-Ramonian space-time, bro. Made yes. up, imaginary. So, so gravity space is the curvature time. of space-time. Those are both forces. I don't understand what your problem here is. Oh, okay. The curving of space-time. How do you curve space-time, T-Jump? Space is nothing, and time is a concept. So you're telling me you curve a nothing concept? No, no. no. Space is a physical thing. Space-time is a physical thing. It exists. It is a single kind of thing, and there are different ways to manipulate it like there are with any fields, like the electromagnetic field or the strong field. Yes. Hmm. Face time. So space has no physical properties. You know that, right? Uh, what? Space time is a physical thing. Yes. Has no physical properties. It bends. It does space? have physical properties. The vacuum of space. What physical properties does the vacuum of space have? So, so space time is one thing. There, space is just a generic human term to refer to the things outside of our atmosphere or close to the edge of our atmosphere. Space time is the actual thing that causes gravity. It's the actual thing that exists and it is a physical thing. So type in, is space time physical? So adding the word time, which is a concept, makes space a vacuum physical. No, no adding the, the word time to the word space to make it a single word space time is physical. Okay, T-Jump, right on, bro. Yeah, it's Forbes. Any go more down questions, to science. Go, go down to the science ones that are right below you. Oh, the science ones. Yeah. The, Wikipedia yeah. is your alma mater right here, space-time. Well, I was going to the one above that, the physics the physics exchange. So, yeah, it does. The, the Wikipedia says it's a physical phenomenon, too. So, yeah, that space-time is a physical law, yes. Four vectors and a physical really law. not physical? Yeah, go for it. Go for it. Is space time really not physical? It doesn't yeah. sound like it's going to help your argument. Where oh, let's find out. Because this is saying this it's be really fun. not physical. Great. Do you know this is literally just a concept? It was what it, Never been concept? verified, never been observed. Space it's time bending? Yes, something it is. you can make up in your mind. Okay, where do you observe space time? Uh, you observe it bending by looking at the light curvature around galaxies. So you observe space-time by looking at light curvature from galaxies. That that's not looking at space-time. That's looking at light curvature from galaxies. You're asserting it's because of space-time. So you don't ever actually observe space-time. You just see things and assert that the cause is space-time. 
yeah, so you see what space time does to things. That's how you see space time. So like, I literally okay. can't see so you. We can't see no, no, we can. So, so like, I see you because I can see the light reflect off your electrons. Does that mean I'm seeing not you? Am I not seeing you? No, I'm seeing you because the thing that makes you up causes an effect which has a demonstrable result, which I can observe. So, so I'm seeing you just like I'm seeing space time when I see the curvature of light passing through it. If you see light curve, you're yeah, observing space time. Like, that is the dumbest crap I've ever heard. I see you, the light bouncing off you, so that means space time is real because I see you. I'm like, cool story, T Jump. Do we have any more questions, James? Because I was done debating this guy like an hour ago. I actually started celebrating in my mind that I didn't have to talk to him anymore. We do have more questions and want to say thank you very much mm. for those questions. So hang in there. Let's see. We have this one from. Two seconds. This is loading for me. So I'm going to read one of the more recent ones that just. Take your time, bro. Tapazzo. Listen, Nathan. Tapazzo <laughs> says, Nathan, did you allude to how glass is made proving the earth is flat slash disproves globe earth? If so, how does it? Yeah, so the glass or the uh, mirrors that they're making, they melt it on molten metal. And that's not only how they make them flat on both sides, but how they get all the bubbles to rise up out of the glass. So fluid statics. That's how they make them flat. Because fluids at rest are flat. That's why I'm a flat earther. Gotcha. And Tim Pryor coming Strong says, I want to debate Nathan, but in our debate, I'm going to demand the same evidence for flat earth that he demands for the globe. He brings up the globe once he loses. Cool story. You want to debate me. I want to go on a date with supermodels. Cool story. Nobody cares. Next up, AF Katie says, so it sounds like you don't want to debate him or you do. Who is him? I don't know that guy. No, I don't want to debate him. If he wants to debate me, he can pay my fee. It's 250 bucks. And that's if, it. Straight up. AF, Katie says, Nathan, what is the motive for a flat earth conspiracy? Why are all the governments in on it? Well, unfortunately, I'm not one of the people lying to you. Like, T-Jump, I'm one of the people telling the truth that the earth is flat and stationary. So, like, why they would lie, I'm not sure. Maybe it's because they're collecting $52 million a day with NASA. I mean, $52 million a day, that seems like a pretty good reason to lie. But maybe it's deeper. Maybe they're trying to convince you that God isn't real, that Genesis 1 isn't true. Then they can create schism in the church, divide the Christians. Divide and conquer has always been their plan. But, hey, I don't know. I'm just speculating. I'm not one of the people lying to you and stealing. 52 million dollars a day a gotcha day. this one coming in from tim Pryor, who says ha ha nathan says he blindly believes people on youtube which is the entire reason flat earth exists because it started off as a joke on youtube Are you troll? Nathan, I guess is troll. i've been testing earth for five years literally the only people here blindly believing people on youtube are my opponent who asked you to look up a video on youtube because he doesn't have any evidence <laughs> Next up, such projection. This one coming in from question the answer says gyroscopes hold rigidity in space. Globe busted. Fact. Yeah, through that. Check out every entry. You have to prove how that actually follows. Ban for so life. Thanks for your super. <laughs> thanks for your super sticker. Ban for life. And Nathan's Tinder date says Nathan, do you want your AirPods and Apple Pencil back? You left them here in Florida. Who's your Tinder date? Oh, thanks, babe. Super cool. Well, which one? I don't know. Apple Pencil? Next up, Shane Zomer, thanks for your question, says, okay, looking for more serious questions. Tim Pryor says, no, 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 no. Or, oh, it's nah, uh, nah, uh, nah, uh. I don't remember. Did you say nah, uh, tonight, Nathan? I don't know. But this one coming in from, do appreciate your question. Tim Pryor says, Nathan, where are your numbers? Where's the math showing your measurements like you asked for from Tom? Earth is flat? What about your double standard? Yeah, it's okay. So uh, we've done laser tests at the Salton Sea, 17 miles. There should be about 200 feet of curve. Uh, the Chicago skyline is visible from the other side of Lake Michigan. So 
that should be completely hidden. We also caught from Kenosha on infrared, the Chicago skyline, which was 59 miles away. And we were roughly one or 200 feet above the ground because we had just gotten above the tree line. So um, guys, I mean, I got to pull up all my videos and just talk about all that. Or I can just talk about fluid statics. The surface of water is level and horizontal to its container. Lobers have to redefine the word level and say it doesn't mean what it means. Flat, it means curve. That's stupid. Gotcha. And Sheeples Phoenix says, no one in flat Earth can explain what cast the shadow onto the moon during the recent total lunar eclipse. Yeah. Can Nathan explain, if not the Earth, then what did cast the shadow onto the moon during the eclipse? I mean, not only did the alleged shadow change directions mid-eclipse, it came in at 3 o'clock and left at, like, noon, which happens on almost every single eclipse. Well, you can't predict uh, eclipses on a heliocentric model because they say the redness caused on the moon, because everyone knows shadows are dark, they got to have an explanation for why the moon is glowing red. And you're asking me about the shadow, which is glowing red. Okay, they say the light bends around the Earth and refracts through the atmosphere. We'll have news for you, ladies and gentlemen. The atmosphere changes hour to hour and day to day. You would never be able to predict eclipses months in advance on a heliocentric model. Newsflash, they don't. They use the Soros cycle. You could check out NASA's website. They admit they use the Soros cycle on their website, which was hijacked from Flat Earther. So I don't need to explain anything about eclipses. You need to explain why you think shadows are red and they can predict eclipses months in advance. That's goofy. That's dumb. And why it changed directions mid eclipse? Did the Earth change directions in the middle of an eclipse? No. Next so, up. How you explain that on your model? Wait. So, so what caused the shadow on the moon? I'm not talking to you anymore. This is question and answer. T jump. If no one has questions for you, then you got to keep quiet. Well, but they. To be fair, that that was their original question. They said, "Can you?" They said, uh, "What cast the shadow onto the moon during the recent totally lunar eclipse? If if not the Earth, what did do it?" So they're asking, like, do you have an alternative that they're looking for? Yeah, it's not a shadow. Duh, that's, they hijacked the Soros cycle. NASA admits it's a Soros cycle. You I can't see. predict on the helicopter. Yeah. You reject okay. the shadow altogether, so you don't give an explanation for the shadow because you don't The moon, I don't, the it's not that I reject anything. It's not I reject anything. I've well, tested I, the moon. Moonlight is measurably cold. It is its own light source. There are no shadows on the moon. Gotcha. I was just saying that you don't concede that there was a shadow. I, I wasn't saying you necessarily reject it. Uh, but Andrew Rouse says, whenever Nathan is stumped, he always says with a pause, are you done? Then proceeds to know he's screwed, but will say it's some sort of, <laughs> will say it's some sort of begging the question fallacy or something. Nathan, is this true? Is this your strategy? No, we're going to have to let the audience decide. And Tim Pryor says, oh, great. Nathan got that. Is the horizon the curve of the Earth bug? No, Nathan. The horizon is not the curve of the Earth. It yeah. is caused by the curve. The Only, oh, Nathan, one sec. He said the horizon is not the curve of the Earth. It is caused by the curve. Only you guys think we claim it is the curve. Nathan? Okay, cool story. No question for me. Just wants to talk. You don't have any sort of disagreement with this? Or, or I'm sorry. Well, let us know if this is your view. Is this your view that namely, do you claim that the the horizon is the horizon the curve of the Earth? Do you claim that the horizon is the curve curve of the Earth? Well, that's what he. That's what the question he asked me earlier in the beginning is the horizon the curve of the Earth, which I think is what he was implying that they are the same. Gotcha. That's what your model says. Boats go over the curve. Boats go over the horizon. The horizon is the curve of the curve. Okay, and this one from Andrew Rouse. Is it Roos or Rouse? Let me know, friend. Andrew says, Nathan, if you've done 10,000 debates, you would have done one debate every day for nearly 30 years. So you must be making that up. Did, were you debating when you were two? No, the, the thing is, is that uh, I don't have like scheduled hour-long debates. Sometimes I'll just debate people in person. Like I ran into a NASA employee at the airport, completely shattered him in a debate. I ran into a PhD, Danny Faulkner asked him some questions about his heliocentric model. He wouldn't even answer. I talked to Aaron Raw on here for like 15 minutes and he ran away. So obviously I can do multiple debates, more than one in a day, if people are just running away from the questions. So. Gotcha. This one coming in from Kango24 says, Nathan, as a truth seeker, aren't you keen to go and do T-Jump radar experiment? 
it's not an experiment. It's man-made. Uh, experiments are observations in nature, and then you manipulate the cause to determine the effect. So everything he said was not an experiment at all whatsoever. And whoever asked that question doesn't know what science is. You are scientifically illiterate. All right, Nathan, we want you to refrain from calling people scientifically illiterate because I have been, to be fair, Nathan, I, I have been telling people that we won't read their super chat if it's an insult. So we, you have to do the same in terms of not insulting the people that do uh, send in a question. Next, Tim Pryor says, Nathan, are you going to give proof of flat earth or are you just going to keep talking about the globe? <clears throat> Nathan. But I got to be real careful. I don't call someone scientifically illiterate and make James upset again because people don't know what experiments are, James. I have to educate them. So they are illiterate to the top. Next up, let's see. For some reason, that seems a little bit more um, innocuous than scientifically illiterate. But John W. says, can you send the link again for any items we need to fund and know about? Oh, yeah, thanks. I will send the link for the crowdfund. I'll drop that in the chat now. Also in the description, Southbound Patchyderm says, I'm a flat earther, but T-Jump hands down won that debate. You got a fan out there, Tom. And Tim Pryor says, appreciate it, says, why is Nathan only one not to expect it to give any evidence of his claim in the same demand that he expects his opponent to? Nathan, That's is this true? true? Is there a double standard here? Not even true. Go rewatch the debate. Next up, JC93013 says, Nathan, is that an Aztec calendar behind you on the wall or something like it? I'm just wondering. No, it's way cooler than that. That's very so, beautiful. Did you make that? Sure. Next up. No, I definitely. Uh, <laughs> Hang on. Is it like? Is it actually like a calendar, like the Mayan calendar? Or is it just art? Oh, it's a face of the sun. I got it. Cool. Mm, that's really beautiful, Nathan. And King 24 says, Nathan, as a truth seeker. Oh, we got that one. Revel Revelation says, if the story was in the frigid atmosphere, would it be a cooler story, Nathan, bro? <laughs> Yeah, there are cool stories, and there are cooler stories. That was a that good one pun. Was kind of <laughs> it was a good dad joke. Shane Sommer, let's see, says Tom's chair claims another one. And question the answer says we measured the curve where T jump with what? Get real. Uh, measure it with lots of different things. Like, what do you want to know about? We can measure it with light. We can measure it with radio waves. We can measure it with sound waves. We can measure it with visuals. We can literally go to space and see it, even though Nathan doesn't believe that. We can measure it with tons of different things. Um, vibrations in the earth. We can measure it with vibrations in the earth, earthquakes. Like, pick, pick your force. We can measure the curvature of the earth with it. Gotcha. And this one coming in from Nathan R says, Mr. Thompson, the moon is either a hologram or a spiritual manifestation. Why do you keep talking as though it's a solid object? I don't think it's a solid object or know that it's a solid object. So I just know that moonlight is cold and sunlight is hot. Moonlight is putrefying. Sunlight is preserving. That's how you make beef jerky. Also, sunlight dries things. Moonlight is the reason you have dew on your grass in the morning. And um, moonlight is not even golden yellow like the sun. It's bluish silver. So they're not the same thing at all whatsoever. They're separate and unique. Gotcha. And thank you very much for this question. Coming in from Tim Pryor says, Nathan doesn't understand heat, tra heat transfer. Touch an oven when it's on and you get burnt. Stick your hand in that same oven without touching anything. You don't get burnt. Class over. Nathan, is there some sort of... Did you talk about heat transfer? I'm trying to remember when you did. Fire. He said if you move away from a fire source, you get colder. That, that's the part of the conversation. Yeah, and then we talked about how you move closer to the sun and it gets colder, which is opposite to what T-Jump just said. Remember? N n nope. So if you're standing next... <laughs> Hold on, you got to let him respond. So, so if you're standing next to an oven and you move further away from the oven... It gets colder, but even if you're moving closer to the sun, so you're getting closer to the sun, but it's getting colder because you're moving further away from the oven. Next up, thank you very much for your question. Uh, let's see. Or to be fair, Nathan, that, that super chat was originally directed toward you. So if you want the last word, I'll give it to you. Yeah, T-Jump just said you move away from the earth. The earth is the oven, so he doesn't come from the sun. It comes from the earth. Cool story, bro. You said earlier in the debate the sun was hot. You just debunked yourself. 
Next question, James. John Gerard, Jordan Gerard, thanks for your question, said Nathan and Wotan together versus Vosh and Jangles. Come on. <laughs> well, that might happen. I don't know. But Pazzo, thanks for your question, says Nathan, did you allude to how glass is made, proving the earth is flat or disproving the globe earth? If so, how does glass being made that way help you? We already answered this question, James. You want me to answer it again? Just briefly, I think they might have come in late. Yeah, they melt the glass on top of molten metal, and that not only makes the glass flat, but makes it free of bubbles. There you go. But it's, I think that people are curious if you could draw together the threads or kind of connect the dots for them and how that suggests a flat earth. Yeah, all fluids at rest, uh, the surface is level and horizontal to its container. So when you melt the metal, it flattens out. You put the glass on top, it flattens out. When you go to the ocean, look at the water. There's not a ton of waves. It's flat, frozen lakes, flat, airplane level flight, flat. According to the FAA target generation facility, flat, non-rotating, not accounting for gravity. I mean, there's over 40 NASA and Air Force and documents where they tell you the earth is flat, it's not rotating, but they show you cartoons before every Universal Pictures movie and you go, that's where I live? Cool story. No, the Truman Show was literally a true man show. You live in a staged world, a domed world. Everyone around you is an actor. Don't trust politicians. Don't trust journalists. Don't trust mainstream scientists. They're all goofballs. Gotcha. And thank you very much for your question. This one coming in from Marshall the Meat Puppet says, why did you tell Aaron that you had a map and model? Nathan, do you have one now, they're asking. And why did you tell Nathan and Aaron that you did? Hey, James, do you want to answer that question? Because I was, very clear, I was very clear with you that I didn't have a map and a model. When you asked me, do you remember when you called me and said, Aaron Raw wants a map and a model? And I said, those are straw man arguments. I never claim a map or claim a model. Large bodies of water don't curve. We have no Coriolis effect, which mainstream science asserts that we do. You can't have gas pressure without a container. Arne didn't want to talk about any of the evidence or science that refutes his model. He just wanted to straw man an argument claiming, I claim to have a map and a model, which I never did. You clearly remember that, James. I said, I don't have a map and I don't have a model. No, I don't. I actually <laughs> thought you said that you did have a, at least I don't remember the map part. I thought you said you had a model, but I would have to go back and look at the emails, but thank you very much for your question. John W says, sorry, TJ, sorry, TJ Trump. I should do this as I can do it myself, but so happy. I do not need to. Tom, is that a friend? Someone, you know, uh, nope. And what's his name? What was his name? John W. Mm, don't recognize it. Next. But thank you, John W. And Lockbeard says, Blasphemer, Ken Wheeler destroys flat earth like a god. Nathan, is this true? Do you know this Ken Wheeler fellow? Yeah, he proved, yeah, he proved moonlight's cold, which debunks the whole religion. That's one of the reasons I started looking into flat earth. I was like, what? Moonlight's cold? That wouldn't work on the heliocentric model. But hey, we're at about two hours, James. This is getting pretty boring. So uh, We do have more questions, Nathan. If you can hang in there. We don't have that many more. I would say maybe another half hour. Cool. Can you bear with us? Cool. Sure. This one coming in from Sidra Fredo Sarabia yeah. said, I've heard a lot of philosophers of science conclude <laughs> science doesn't answer anything. Is this true, T-Jump, despite your use in philosophical arguments? Uh, maybe he means with absolute certainty. Science doesn't answer anything with absolute certainty, but it doesn't need to. It still gives answers just fine. Next up, lock. We got that one. Philosopher Tiger says, planets round, earth round, Nathan wrong. Gotcha. And the Batman says, Nathan, um, W-Y-T. Oh, what do, you, what do you think of the recent fraud among Glober YouTubers? I don't even know what he's talking about. Next up, Mike Billar mm -hmm. says, Tom, you got to do some more research, dude. Don't make up reasons if you don't know the answer. ISS International Space, Space Station is in free fall, not zero G. 
Right. I said that. I said it. gravity still applies to it. It's near zero G because it's not as affected as gravity as it would be on the ground level, which is why they have to put it in orbit, because if it was stationary, it would fall straight to Earth because it is affected by gravity. So I literally I said that. Gotcha. Thank you very much for your question. Coming in from Eric Vinicius Gomez Almeida. Thank you. Says Nathan said Earth isn't spinning because of balloons. If you throw a ball upwards inside a moving car, it'll fall straight down. Inertia, first law. Nathan? If you throw a ball upward inside a car that's not moving, it also comes straight down. That's not an argument for globe. It works on both models. I'm sorry to inform you of that. Get back to me next week. Gotcha. This next question coming in from Tim Pryor says, "I we got that one. Silver Harlow, thanks for your question, said, adding the word cleaner, which is a kind of thing to the word vacuum, is an empty space, which is, sorry, I butchered that. Silver said, adding the word cleaner, which is a kind of thing to the word vacuum, which is an empty space, changes it to an object you can use to clean the rug. Not analogous to vacuum in space. The person's just trolling you. Next up, Bubblegum Gun says gravity is measurement of time bending into space. Gravity is a measurement of the curvature of space time. Gotcha. Nathan, are you in agreement? Space has no physical properties. Time's a concept. If you think you can bend that, you're, I'm not going to say it, James. Silly. Next up, Silver Harlow <laughs> says that's part of You're scientifically literate. You're numb nuts. If you think nothing and time causes things to happen, okay? Literally devoid of any type of wisdom, original thought process, or free thinking whatsoever. That's the dumbest thing anyone could ever make up. Next Johnny up, Kruger. Silver Harlow says that's how compound words work. The combination has a separate meaning, which can be a different kind of thing than the parts themselves. That's referring think, to the vacuum cleaner. No, I think it's about when he brought up the word space, like he showed the picture of the word space. And I said, you have to, it's space time because the word space refers to something differently than space time. Space time is a specific thing in physics. Uh, I think that's what it was referencing. Gotcha. Nathan, what are your thoughts? So adding time, which is a concept to a vacuum devoid of physical properties makes it curve things. <laughs> cool story, bro. I just told you that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. I don't think, I think the point was that the words together aren't literally just taking the individual words and what those individual words mean and just smishing them together. I think the, the two words put together mean a physical thing that actually exists. It's not just taking the concept of space and the concept of time and just taking those two concepts and just smushing them together like it does with the words. The, the words when put together mean a specific kind of thing in physics represented by the lambda equation in general special relativity, which is a physical force. It's, it's not the concepts of space and time. Those are different things. Next up, unless you have thoughts on that, Nathan. Silver Harlow says, uh, we got that. Bubblegum Gun says, God says the earth is a globe. Flat earthers are CIA. Are you working for any sort of government agency like CIA, NASA, Nathan? Nope. Gotcha. And this one coming in from, do appreciate your question. We don't have too many more, Nathan. We're almost there. You look a little bit, you look tired almost. But this is coming in from Philosopher dude, Tiger. Five years, bro. five years, dude. Jeez Louise, how pathetic, bro. Five years of, James, can you look up a YouTube video? <laughs> Thomas, he's making fun of you. Uh, Next up. Irony. irony is beautiful. I love it. Philosopher Tiger says, Nathan, I understand mm -hmm. you may be convinced that the earth is flat. Thank you for taking the time to debate. You are wrong. Minecraft globe is the truth. Nathan? Cool. I think it was supposed to be a playful one. I don't know what like Minecraft globe is. Is that the game? Yeah. Pancake of Destiny says, T-Jump's facial expressions won the debate. It's a fact. Oh. Yep. Tim Pryor, thanks for your question, says, that's a lie. Bob did it three times. Even isolated the gyroscope. Still picked up the drift. Nathan, I think it's about your friend Bob. The drift, a deviation in life. 
Yeah, it's a deviation in light. So you can do it 100 times. The deviation will be in the light. Sagnac, who invented the interferometer, not Bob. Bob didn't invent the interferometer. The guy who made the technology said it was the vortex of the ether. So you can blindly believe a Netflix documentary by a bunch of people who aren't scientists put it together. Or you could go with the guy who invented the technology. Bob was just using it and then got words taken out of his mouth. Gotcha. There's no ether. Shut up, T-Tump. No one's even talking to you right now. Is there another question? Wait, one sec. Is Minecraft Globe a game like Minecraft? What the heck is uh, Minecraft Globe? I think it's just a joke that's like saying that the, there's a globe in the Minecraft world or something. It's not really flat. So like the, oh. the, in, in Minecraft, everything is flat. It's just a flat plane. But he's saying that in the game, it's the, the real world is in, in the game is actually a globe. It's not really flat. I think I think this is how funny Glovers are. Next up, <laughs> Sigifredo Sarabia says, Nathan, how is moonlight colder? Where do you draw the line of temperature of a shadow at night and the moonlight without a sun that that would obviously heat? Okay, I don't know if you've ever been out during a full moon, but there's an obvious difference or discrepancy where the shade is and where the moonlight is. So if you test where the moonlight is, it's cold. If you test where the shade is, that's hot. That's actually the opposite of what happens when the sun's out. So if light from the moon was being reflected by the sun, then the sunlight would be hot, not cold. Moonlight is cold, not hot. They are obviously two different lights. That's why the moon is bluish silver. Dude, I just went over all this. Like they keep asking the same questions over and over, James. Do you understand like how that gets super boring? No. Eric Vinicius Gomez Almeida <laughs> says... Nathan, can you show us any math on how far we're supposed to see on a flat Earth? Provide a formula that would match flat Earth model, but not the globe. How far we can see? Well, I can tell you how far we should see on a globe. It would be 1.22 times the square root of the observer's height and feet, and we see way too far. For example, the black swan, 10 times farther than that, that would make the radius of the Earth equal to the orbital path of the moon. We actually falsified the radius of the Earth. Earth's not a globe, 24,901 miles around. Cheers. Gotcha. This one Smoking coming in got. from Tim Pryor says, I've done an essay on Egypt. No, the stars do not line up with the pyramids anymore. Cool story, bro. Wow. Okay, Nathan? cool. Well I was just at the Georgia Guidestones, and the Polaris did line up with the hole they drilled in it, and they made that 40 years ago. Now, I haven't been to Egypt and confirmed it, so I don't know. Maybe you're right. But Polaris definitely matches up. I confirmed that. And you probably haven't confirmed anything about what you're talking about. You're literally just saying it, because that's the glow of religion, ladies and gentlemen. Next. I found an article that says that they don't match up anymore. Question cool. the answers. Says T-Jump, what, with what device can you detect curve? Uh, any of the devices to measure any of the forces that you want. I, I would say pick the ham radio waves that I actually presented in the YouTube video. Ham radio waves can you be used to bounce radio signals off the moon and detect the curve. That, that's the easiest and cheapest one that anyone can afford and do in their home to do this. It's very simple. Gotcha. This one coming in from Tim Pryor says, okay, you tested it. Where's the measurements and the numbers? Saying you tested the salt flats doesn't mean anything, Nathan. Yeah, okay. Um, cool story. My YouTube got deleted, guys. I had 850 videos that just got erased with 20,000 subscribers. Like, what are you talking about? Of course, I have videos that were gone. I didn't have, like, an external hard drive with all my videos packed up on, like, over the last five years. So, gotcha. sorry, I'm sure they're out there. Andrew Rouse, thanks for your question. Said Nathan, why is there a pressure gradient? It's Rouse or Rouse like house. Thank you for letting me know that, Andrew. Andrew Rouse. Yeah, because there's heat being introduced. So obviously that makes the gas inhomogeneous and anisotropic because there's energy being introduced. It's not a static system, it's a dynamic system. You just have to go look up what that means. Next up, Mike Billars says 15 PSI on the Earth's surface, 5 PSI on top of Mount Everest. Extrapolate, please, for both T-Jump and Nathan. What was the question? 
We'll give you a chance to respond. First, talks about how have a gradient. Yeah, no problem. He was wondering about the gradient, which was literally the last question I answered. Necessary antecedent to any pressure whatsoever is a container. Welcome to Flat Earth, pressure gradient guy. Go ahead, T-Jump. What was the question? Question was, <laughs> and I quote, 15 PSI on the Earth's surface, 5 PSI on top of Mount Everest. Extrapolate, please, in parentheses, you know, for both to respond to. Yeah, so the density of the air gets lighter as you go higher because there's less stuff pushing on it to compress it because there's less oxygen above it. And so caused by gravity, that means that as the pressure, PSI, will go down the higher in the atmosphere you go until it reaches zero and there's, you're in space. Gotcha. And thank you very much for your question. This one coming in from, do appreciate it. Philosopher Tiger says, thank you for understanding my joke, T-Jump. Nathan, are you sure you're not part of the CIA, though? <laughs> Nathan, are you secretly a brilliant spy from the CIA? <laughs> okay. Nathan, <laughs> no sense of humor. All right. Mike Billar <laughs> says, Nathan's, oh, let's see that. Let's see. Looking for more questions. Tim Pryor says, yep, still try to pick the article. Funny how Nathan didn't read the part where it says the distance to the moon. Nathan, is that true? Did you not read that part? I guess I didn't. Yeah, the, argue, the article we pulled up about the moon being in the atmosphere, I think, is the, it's the one that... He's talking about. Oh, well, I guess that means the moon's a ball and the earth's a ball then because that article said that how far the moon was. That's a good one. Okay. Wow, bro. <laughs> this is what it's devolving, <laughs> devolving into. Tim Pryor says, those are words, not measurements, Nathan. <laughs> Nathan, they're words, not measurements. Tim Pryor says, what do you think? He's wrong. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> um, so you, okay. Well, we, <laughs> we want, you're, you're quite the intellectual over there. All right. So next up, I'm teasing you. I'm teasing you. This one coming in from, we've got maybe one more. I, I saw a standard question that I picked out of chat. And let's see, this one coming in from Colossus says, will Nathan team up with G-Man again? Maybe I like G-Man. He was cool. You got it. And Silver Harlow says, yes. so maybe G-Man and Nathan pairing up again. Silver Harlow says, yes, I meant, quote, space time, unquote, is like, quote, vacuum cleaner, unquote. The compound word or phrase means something different than the parts. Nathan? Okay. Like that was like that person like literally made another super chat about their other super chat talking about a vacuum cleaner. But do you are you trying to understand their point, Nathan? Nathan, yeah, they're talking about vacuum cleaner. Yeah, but nonetheless, if it's an analog, that's true. Like that is you know gives the, illustrates a principle well. Then it's an analogy. It's an analogy. Big deal. So, are you trying to understand it? I've seen a vacuum cleaner. I've never seen space time. <laughs> okay. That's, I guess you're why you disagree. And, oh, that other question, this one coming in from, uh, this is interesting because now I, I want to press you on this question. This one was asked already, but someone else asked it as a standard question as well. What's the motivation for a globe earth conspiracy? I think you had mentioned um, that they get paid an in incredible amount of money like, but I, I think they're not clear on like why would they get paid significantly less if they just admitted that it was a flat Earth? Like they, it just seems like an arbitrary difference. Like why would that make it such that if they said like okay we admit it's a flat Earth? Like, are, are you saying because oh, okay th now this is one maybe you're thinking maybe it's that if they were to go back on it now, they would look like fools and no they would get their funding cut. So now they could never go back and say, oh, we were wrong this whole time. It's actually been flat because they'd lose all their funding. Is that what you were saying, Nathan? No, they think... stole all the money. It's not funding. They are thieves. They stole all the money. It's not that we got it wrong and the earth was flat. You wouldn't have a space agency unless you're on a ball in space. 
So the entire thing was a fraud. They stole trillions of dollars from the American people. All of you guys sat there every Friday watching Star Wars and Spaceballs and all these stupid movies about space, wasting your time, not growing food, not hanging out with your family, not exercising. It's ridiculous. So enjoy the Matrix. It's you know, truth isn't for everyone. Well, I, so the, I, you, so the so motivation. You I think I think I get it. So I think his motivation is that the reason they invented the globe theory was because it's by doing that they could get funding from the government to make nasa is that no i my answer is i'm not lying to you i don't know why all you guys want me to speculate on why a bunch of evil people steal 50 million dollars a day go ask them i'm not lying to you bro Okay, so you want me to like conjure? I don't have like a crystal ball that I could just rub. It's like, why are the elite telling us Ursa Globe? Oh, look, it's this. Okay, go figure it out for yourself, bro. Maybe they're going to launch an alien invasion and you don't get aliens on a flat earth because we live in a dome firmament. So maybe the reason they lied hasn't even happened yet. And you're over here going, why would they lie? Tell me why they lie. And it hasn't even happened yet. So just take a chill pill on the why they would lie. Who cares? They lied. Get over it. When you meet one of the top 1% of the 1% who's lying to you about the earth, ask them, why are you lying to me about the shape of the earth? I don't know for sure, but I know $52 million a day is a pretty good reason to lie. Just so I understand, right. And I'm being sincere. I'm not being like facetious. I, Cause I didn't know that this is like, so would you take the position that the earth isn't in space that it is like kind of like on the ultimate foundation of reality that is some it's not extended in space if space is a vacuum it violates the second law of thermodynamics we wouldn't have gas pressure on earth if the space was a vacuum that they tell us is which is why there's hundreds if not thousands of videos of nasa faking space with harnesses green screens wires hairspray augmented reality bubbles in the pool one of the astronauts actually said he was drowning during a live feed now i don't know if you know this but space is a vacuum you shouldn't drown in space okay and i asked three different nasa employees why that happened i got three different answers one said spit one said it was sweat and another one said it was a malfunction in the suit so they can't literally keep their lives straight at all some astronauts say you can't see stars in space some astronauts say you can see stars in space and planets and moons and magellanic clouds they astronauts can't even get their story straight. There's only 550 of them. Like, how pathetic is that? So, yes, space is fake, James. On the flat Earth, the sky's a firmament, and above that would be heaven. Gosh, and Tim Pryor says that didn't show numbers for those measurements, namely when they had asked about numbers. And they said, I want numbers, Nathan. Numbers isn't what you demanded. And I think they're saying, like, you asked the same from Tom. Yeah. I gave plenty of numbers. The black swan, we observe from 10 miles out the horizon. The horizon should be 1.225 times, those are numbers, 1.225 times the square root of the observer's height in feet. So if it's one, that's another number, then you would multiply it by one. That's another number. So we take 1.225, another number, multiply it by one, another number, you have a horizon at 1.225 miles out. We've observed it at over 10, 10. That's another number, miles out. We falsified the globe model with numbers. And I gave them to you just now. Welcome to Flat Earth. Gotcha. This one go. from Revelation. Last one that I have here on the list says, is the candy horizon, <laughs> is the candy horizon is where your eye line meets the end of the fruit roll up? <laughs> Next up, want to say thank you so much to our guests. We really do appreciate them, folks. As always, we want to encourage you to attack the arguments instead of the person. And, folks, this is the last debate of our 12-hour stream. I don't know if you guys know this. If you have scrolled back on the timer, my dear friends, you will see that if you go all the way back to the very start, that was 10 hours and 39 minutes ago. As our first debate was on veganism, it was a tag team debate. Then we had a debate on Black Lives Matter. Then we had a debate on whether or not there's evidence for intelligent design. So, if, folks, if you have not already enjoyed this whole stream, highly encourage you to do so, as this has been a 
a huge group effort in terms of all the debaters who were thankful for coming on the show in order to make this happen and want to encourage you. Hey, folks, we are pumped about this future. As I'm going to just mention this really quick, folks, we are thrilled. We're at 90% for the fundraiser that you see on the far right side of the screen. We are absolutely thrilled, and we want to encourage you, if you have not already done so, I am going to throw the crowdfund link in the description. We have gotten up to where we're almost at the end, folks. We only have six days left, and we're at 90%, which is absolutely phenomenal. So I do want you to check this out. It is going to be absolutely epic. The crowdfund. I am putting in the old live chat. And so we absolutely want to encourage you to join in that crowdfund with us as we are going to get that remaining 10% and make this debate that you are seeing in the bottom right of your screen between Christian apologist Dr. Kenny Rhodes and Matt Dillahunty as they will be debating on June 5th. And we are going to make it happen, folks. So want to encourage you to join in that crowdfund with us. You can give as little as a dollar if you want. And that helps us take bigger risks in terms of getting bigger headliner debates as we are striving to build this channel and provide a neutral playing field for everybody to make their case. So thank you one last time, Tom and Nathan. I'll be back in just a moment, folks, with a post credit scene, but want to say again, Tom and Nathan, it's been a pleasure to have you. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thanks Nathan, for showing up. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. And folks, as mentioned, I'll be back in just a moment. So stick around. <laughs>